It looks like and feels an awful lot like fall in Seattle, Washington. It must be because for the 83rd straight year, we're coming inside Husky Stadium for a little college football. It's the 14th ranked Washington Huskies against the San Jose State Spartans. Good afternoon, David Locke along with Sonny Sixkiller. And the San Jose State Spartans are not a particularly talented team, but they throw a lot of different looks at you and they try to confuse you. That's going to be a real task for the Huskies defense. Oh, no question. Multi-dimensional, kitchen sink, you name it, David, they've got it all. And young men like Evan Benjamin, the redshirt freshman from Redden, Washington, has to step in today for the injured Jimmy Newell and really play discipline defense. Now, on the offensive end of things, the talk all week long has been about the running game. Now, the facts are that Rich Alexis had more yards against Michigan than he did in any game all of last year. That's the sign of a developing offensive line and a sign of developing Rich Alexis. Uh, there's no question, 28 carries. That means he can carry the load for many carries. The offensive line would like to see him carry maybe not as many as 28 times, but maybe get some significant yardage today. People have had big days against the Spartans. The leader of that offensive line is Khalif Barnes, and he knows this running game needs to improve. As a whole, you know, we came out there with two young guys on the line, uh, Dan Dix and Aaron Butler, and I think they played well, man. I mean, I think they did better than me in my first game last year because they had to go into Michigan. So um, as a whole, I think we defended, I think we passed block well. I think we gave uh, Cody uh, a lot of time to sit back there and throw and, um, and pick guys off. And uh, I, the run game could have improved a lot. Uh, I think where, I think um, Michigan had a, uh, you know, had a, had a great defense, and uh, they were sniffing out a lot of run. The Huskies are home and ready to roll in front of the loyal purple and gold against the San Jose State Spartans. Huskies at 0-1. The Spartans at 1-0. Spartans coming off a win against Arkansas State, 33 and 14. Fitz Hill's the head coach. He's in his second year. He has a doctorate. That's Dr. Fitz Hill. They were just three and nine last year. He is one that receives rave reviews from anybody you ask about him. Another guy has probably that same thing said about him is the man who brings the Huskies into this house for the fourth year in a row, Rick Neuheisel. It's been a long week for Rick because he's bounced back from the 12 man on the field, 26 and 11 in his career nice day fall is definitely in the air about 65 degrees here in seattle no threat of rain should i dare say that wind about five to ten degrees and uh all right they're saying chance of showers sunny i guess every <laughs> single day in seattle there's a chance of showers well, somewhere in the mix well in september but uh it's actually a good day for football david it's uh, nice and comfortable 65 or 63 and the wind it is swirling down on the field. Well, it'll be very different than it was in Ann Arbor, which was a very warm day. San Jose State's going to start on offense. We talked about it a little bit in the open. They run the old single wing, I guess you'd call it. It comes from one double A back down in Louisiana. And they'll bring everything at you. And they will be fun to watch today. Charles, Pauly, and Kedrick Starling will be deep for the Spartans. Pauly last year averaged 25 yards a return. Starling is one who comes with big time press clipping. So both these guys can let it rip and you know that the special teams were a large focus of practice all week long. John Anderson will do the kicking. We're underway. <laughs> Starling will take a knee and the San Jose State Spartans will start at the 20-yard line. They've made a change at quarterback this year. They'll start with Scott Rizla. That's the knocked out two-year starter, Marcus Arroyo. Rizlov completed 50% of his passes against Arkansas State. At a TD and interception. The offensive line is led by Tim Provost. He's already been invited to the Shrine game. Mons Walker, their center, is a great athlete. The backs, the running back is Oscar Rigg. Brandon Mills is really a blocker. And then Wooten and Polly are pretty good athletes. Outside. No pass on the first play. It'll go to their tight end, Marcus Helfman. 
to pick up a three or four, and already right out of the shoot, you see some deception. You'll see it a lot, and that's what the Huskies' defense is going to have to deal with. Defense had had a pretty darn good day against the Wolverines. Josh Miller, Terry Johnson stepping up their game. And Kai Ellis, we all know what an outstanding game he had in his first one. Two tackles for a loss, a sack, an interception, a fumble. And the secondary with the new addition, Evan Benjamin, replacing the injured Jimmy Newell. The creature, Kai Ellis. Roll out, Rizlov will throw, and he misses his receiver intended for Wooden. Well, you know, David, the reason Rislov's in there is to do things like that. He can run with the football, talking to some of their people. He's not really fast, but he's very capable of keeping the ball and doing something positive, which Coach Fitzhill wants out of his quarterback, something positive. Not too many turnovers. You see Coach Fitzhill right there. Why didn't you hit that man? He was open. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fitzhill is an offensive coach. He's one of those guys who's going to worry about the offense. He's going to let his defensive coordinator keep an eye on what's going defensively. Third and six. Out of the shotgun, which they'll be most of the day. It's an inside screen with room and a first down. And breaking free is Pauly all the way into Husky territory. That's Chris Pauly. Caught 41 passes last year. And that's one of their many versatile receivers that you're going to see. Well, he's going to come from the left side. You'll see he'll come right underneath here. See all the backers. See Madavi. Everyone going to the flow to the left side. And all of a sudden, Pauly's going down the sidelines. He and Galloway, uh, excuse me, Carruthers get into it just a little bit. But there's going to be a little bit of talking from San Jose State today. 29-yard pickup. Into Husky territory. Toss sweep, it's Ferguson, and he goes to the 41, and your TV screen should not be adjusted. He is, in fact, that small. <laughs> it is remarkable. Ferguson, you see him there, five foot five, 143 pounds. He's got a lot of heart, doesn't he, David? I mean, the size of this young man, he was very productive in high school, and when you're that size, you can't really see him. If you're a linebacker or a safety on the defensive side, you're going to have to look through people and try and find that young man. Ran for 73 yards last week. Double tight end set. There's love pressured and sacked. Hopoy coming off the side for his first sack of the season. That'll be third and ten, a loss of Coming from the right side, you're going to see him blow right through the second tackle. I didn't get his number, but Provost was looking to the inside, and Manas Hopoy, with his speed, just bursting through the line. Hopoy was a partial qualifier so that he can regain an extra year of eligibility if he's on pace for graduation. And his first year, third and ten. Open man, it's Wooden, he's got a lot of room. At the 30 and down to the 24 and the crossing route leads to big dividends for the Spartans. 24 yards to Wooden. And another one of their versatile, speedy, six foot tall wide receivers. Well watch right here, you see Tawadi Wooden coming out as soon as this play starts. And we talked about it in the pregame a little bit, David, about the safety play and who they have to follow. Coming in coverage, you see the man right there, Evan Benjamin, gets knocked down by the official, as you can see on that play. Otherwise, he might have been in position to make the play. Well, confusion, Rizlock taken down, it's Hopoy again. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to see the men in the stripes when you're in coverage and trying to get out there on your responsibility that time on the previous play. Unfortunately for Benjamin, he not in the way. The big plays getting the Huskies here already. And when talking with Tim Hungley, the defensive coordinator this week, that's the one thing he wanted to rectify is not allow those big plays that happened against Michigan. Spartans will go from the gun again. They really spread you out four wide. And Rizlov will have to take a timeout. With the ball set at the 24-yard line. San Jose State Spartans will take a timeout. Fitzhill and 
Scott Rislav will talk it over. And the Huskies defense needs to step up a little bit. Husky Stadium a bit surprised by the early surge by the Spartans. Opening drive of the football game here at Husky Stadium. Scott Rislov has led the Spartans down to the 25-yard line. Second and 11. High snap. No option off this. Rislov will carry. As he did six times against Arkansas State. This time for a pickup of about four. Yeah, he missed the handoff to his big tailback. Oscar Rigg, the JC transfer, trying to do a little quick hitter, but couldn't make it happen and Rislav had to keep that one David third and eight now where the Spartans have been two of two this is what makes the Spartans difficult though that handoff is really no different than the option that the Huskies run with Marcus Tuyasa Sopo a few years ago Fitzhill believes in this system and puts a lot of pressure on his quarterback to make decisions four wide again motion man Pauly comes across Tough snap, it's an option flip to Pauly, it's sniffed out. Beautiful play by Anthony Kelly. Yeah, a little shuffle pass right there up the middle, but there was so much confusion up front. You take a look at the offensive line and the defense is right there. There's nowhere to go on this play. That more, <laughs> more purple there. Maybe it's the high snaps. We've seen so many of those so far on this drive. Center Lamonts Walker, who originally was a tackle and switch. Nick Gillum will kick. Gillum was two of two on field goal attempts against Arkansas State. This one will be a 39-yarder. Last year, he was three of four. Bad snap or bad hold, and the kick after a hesitation is no good. Bo Pierce, their third-string quarterback, couldn't handle it, and the Huskies dodge a bullet right out of the shoot on a beautiful day here in Seattle Washington you're watching Husky football on Fox Sports Net Cody Pickett for the first drive of the game, over 300 yards in his last game for the third time in his career. In fact, there's only two other people in Huskyville who've ever done that flag on the opening possession. One of them is sitting to my right, by the way. One of Sonny Six Skiller's records may be in jeopardy if Cody Pickett throws for 300 <laughs> yards. There's still one left, David. I <laughs> False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. I'll make it down. first and 15. False start right out of the shoot. Huskies led by Cody Pickett, as we're mentioning, with his 300-yard passing game against Michigan. Completed 62% of his passes as well. Offensive line, Khalif Barnes is the big stud in that group. And running back Rich Alexis coming off his 90-plus-yard game. Kevin Ware, the tight end, set all sorts of career highs against Michigan. First pass to Pat Reddick is a drop and incomplete, and the Huskies... Looked a little uncertain right out of the shoot here. They shoot sitting second and 15. Well, uncertain, but that certainly was catchable ball. Pat Raddick, you do not see him drop very many passes uh, in games or in practice. Three wide receivers. Reggie Williams on the near side. Run to Alexis. Scoots forward for about three. The third down. The worst defense in college football last year. That's what the San Jose State Spartans statistically ended out as. They are a brand new group, though. Ten of the 11 guys are back. Philip Perry's a very good athlete. Their leading defensive player, Luke Leheron. Where's number 20? You'll see him all over the place. They give him great freedom. And they've changed their cornerbacks for this game. And Treston George is a true freshman. 
who was recruited and offered a scholarship by the University of Washington. Third down and 12. Pickett with a lot of time, looking for Reggie. And the ball comes loose, incomplete. Nice play by the safety coming across to give Reggie Williams a little welcome to the ball game. And that right there was the freshman out of Berkeley, Treston George. Yeah, Treston George out there in coverage. You see max protection, tight end staying in to help block. Going downfield, almost a tremendous grab, but that was a tremendous hit right there. That's some big Gerald time Jones. college football. Gerald Jones, a free safety coming over for an assist there. Doesn't look like the worst defensive team in college football. McLaughlin to punt. After a rocky game, Michigan gets this one off from fair catch at the 40. And that's where San Jose State will start their second drive of the football game with no score. 38 yard putt for McLaughlin, which is a nice switch after his poor net yardage against Michigan. Well, defensively, Sonny, San Jose State, I think, surprised the Huskies a little bit. They well, came out. Uh, actually, I think they've surprised them on both ends of the football a little bit. Well, they moved the ball in offense. There's no question about that. Now, from the Huskies' offense, it's tough to start out with a penalty before you even get your first play going, and that doesn't st start sit well with Rick Neuheisel. Riz Lav is a J.C. transfer. Started his career at North Dakota, the quarterback for the Spartans. And played at Ellsworth Junior College. Bill Roll can run out of this and will. At which point he's met immediately by Marquise Cooper, who had 11 solo tackles against Michigan. I think the Huskies learned something about Marquise Cooper. This is one of those guys when the uh, clocks are ticking and the lights are on, his game comes to a different level. Well, and there's no question, the young man out of Arizona, as you see right there, career day, 11 solo tackles. You hardly see that in any sport, maybe in grid kid football, but not in college football. Well, I saw those kids out here before the game today, the great <laughs> environment around Husky Stadium. Be second and five. We'll go to the regular two bat. Double tight end. This is little man Ferguson. Scoots through. Still on his feet. Changing directions every which way all the way out to the 37. And it's tough to see the little man. There's no question. You know, Ferguson, they said last year was 5'4". This year he's grown up to 5'5 five, five <laughs> and gained about four pounds. But you see him cut back. There's the key. See the flow going. Marquise Cooper looks like he's in great position to make the play. But this young man, as the coach has told him, you better keep those legs running just like bowels on a car, baby. <laughs> keep them going. 16-yard pickup. He's not a fluke. Last year, he averaged 5.2 yards a carry. And against UTEP, ran for 196 yards on 10 carries. On well, San Jose State's three wins. Here's Ferguson again behind a great line of blocking. And he gets out to the 31. Joe A is leading the way. And the Spartans would look to be the team that's come in here ranked 14th in the country in the opening two possessions. Well, they're certainly motivated to come into Husky Stadium. They've, they haven't been here for a while, but they play a lot of big schools, and this is a, the one of four for the year that they play that are ranked in the top of the nation. And they're come out inspired, David. These guys are really working it. The Husky defensive front needs to get some penetration and get across that line of scrimmage. Hayes, the only returning starter on that offensive line, is the lead blocker. Very tight formation here. And it's Ferguson again. Coming out to meet him's Carruthers, but he misses the tackle as Ferguson is then pushed out of bounds by Cooper. Good job on the point on the corner. Marcus Helfman, the tight end for San Jose State against Jafar Williams. Really locked him up, and, with, and that allowed the running back to get around the corner, Dave. First down, 33 yards on four carries for Ferguson. Misdirection and all the various things the Huskies prepared for right now. They're just getting beat by good old fashioned football. 90 yards to three so far. Counterplay. This one's the fullback Mills. He just powers forward for a yard or two. The fans are starting to get into a little bit too. A little quiet there to begin the game, David, for Husky Stadium. and. 
sometimes the players rise to uh, the fans appreciation you see the them gathered here a couple weeks before school starts for the students. San Jose State is not awestruck by coming in here. They went to USC, Colorado, Arizona State, and Stanford last year. They went to LSU in 99. They've been everywhere. Rizlov to throw with a blitz coming, gets it off complete. It's Mills again for a pickup inside the 20-yard line to about the 19. With a blitz coming off the corner, Scott Rizlov really sat in there well. Well, that's not bad for a guy like Brandon Miles. You see him sneak through the line on the right side. Looked like Greg Carruthers is supposed to be out there on him, but here's a guy that's, it's, it's unbelievable. He's a former, <laughs> he, on the defensive line a year ago, David. Well, now he's, he's the, the fullback. He's the only <laughs> returning starter on the defense. <laughs> he's just playing fullback. He started all 12 games last year. Had 33 tackles. Rizlov with an inside screen, almost picked off. Whoa. Brock Alexander almost had 70 yards of green grass. He was going to get to trot on down. Well, he was reading Jamal Broussard 11 for San Jose State out on his right-hand side, or excuse me, left-hand side. A lot of husky colors over there. Tell you what, if he'd had that one, no one would have caught him. Nick Gillum will come in to try his second field goal. He missed the first one. It was a poor snap by Jeff Gordon or a poor hold by Bo Pierce, their holder. This will be a 37-yard attempt. The kick is no good. And field goal kicking against the Washington Huskies this year now goes to one for six. And there's no score on the scoreboard. The Huskies have yet to get rolling. We'll see if they can come it up on Fox Sports Net. Huskies looking to get some rhythm offensively. The opening drive, they were unable to move. They'll work Alexis on the opening play here for about one and a half. Laharan on the tackle had 14 tackles for San Jose State against Arkansas State. He was their leading tackler two years ago, but had to redshirt. And they give him a great deal of freedom which will be tough for the Huskies to recognize. That'll be one of the things Cody Pickett has to read at the line. High formation. Alexis through the middle again. This time for about three more as he gets a nice surge forward yeah. behind Dan Dix. Yeah, following Dan Dix up the middle. You'll see San Jose State bringing people up to the line of scrimmage. Knowing the Huskies are trying to work on their running attack and have worked on it this past week in practice, bringing the backers and a safety on a blitz that time. The offensive line, with much more experience than it had a year ago, has shown some signs of coming through and having a big year. They need some success here. Nobody left in the backfield as Tuiasa Sopo goes in motion. Pickett looking for Ware. It's complete out to the 40-yard line. Kevin Ware coming off the four completions for 38 yards. Gets another one today. You're going to see that man right there, Kevin Ware, fight off the line of scrimmage right here on 17, the backer. And he's going to release from him push him away, get the pass. Nice read by Cody Pickett and nice throw. Boy, that's neat football. Tuiasa Sopo's motion took that line, guy out of that area with the three wide receivers on the other side. That's why Gilby's known as one of the best. <laughs> First and 10, Pickett looking for Reggie Williams who gets bumped by Gerald Jones and a flag on the play. Gerald Jones not realizing that uh, he didn't do anything wrong, trying to plead a little bit with the officials, but 
they rolled it up out there and Jones came over as a safety for that deep zone area David and uh, pass was a little bit late and Reggie almost came up with a great grab you see him right there coming over right there to safety he's going to get it oh and sometimes you look at the feet and they get messed up is it really a call I don't know David tough call wow look at that a quarterback giving a defensive guy a little bit of a break you a little bit of that. it was just a little bit wasn't are you it feeling all right Sonny <laughs> My fever is still there, it's high. Well, for the first time, the Huskies move into Spartan territory. This game's had a drastically different feel than the last time these teams met in 1996 when Corey Dillon ran for 222 yards <laughs> in the first quarter. He had over 300 yards, an NCAA record in that first quarter, you may recall. Double tight end, single back. Formation they used a lot against Michigan. Quick pass to Jackson. And Eddie Jackson's got his first completion of the game after the 39. Corey Dillon, 300 yards, and just every play seemed to be the same one. He just was powering by, guys, Sonny. Well, I tell you, it was a wet day that day. I remember it. And Corey Dillon, uh, what a horse he was, and uh, 224 yards in the first uh, and all quarter, of, 222 yards. All of those numbers in the first quarter. Here's the 80 yard screen play. Well, you know, you look at Brock Hewitt, that's nice and easy to throw him a screen play, hand off, and <laughs> you're on the sidelines with a comfortable lead. Brock, you have Edwin James and Marvin Harrison for that. He gets a chance this year. Paul Arnold from Cody Pickett. To the 30 and another first down as Keith Gilbertson's crew is beginning to get a little bit of a rhythm. Well, they talked about it last week, the two receivers, Reggie Williams and Paul Arnold, out with some injury during two days. Paul's just now starting to get himself back. You see his legs keep driving and, you know, he's a big guy. He's over 200 pounds and starting to round into shape. Take it, three of five. 29 yards started very well, hitting six of his first seven against Michigan last week and then lost his rhythm a little bit. And obviously got it back as he went over 300 yards. Alexis met as he comes through the hole. And on the play, C.J. Arnold. Let's take a look at the old line here and see what's going on. Pretty much doubling down on the nose guard and Zach Tuyasasopo coming up. Unfortunately for the Huskies, C.J. Arnold, their strong safety, filled that hole very quickly. Arnold, who had six tackles in Arkansas State. That's important. Why? Because he only had five the year before. Alexis tries left side, cuts back. The ball's just short of the first down. Spreading the field a little bit gave Alexis a bit more room. That's a look you like to see the Huskies that time running away from the San Jose defense where they're stacked to their left side. This move right here is nice. This is what you want to see from Rich Alexis. Being able to cut the back upfield. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to keep his feet, but that's one thing. The vision thing, I think, is getting better with him. Obviously, last week with 28 carries, he's had a little bit of work ready for today. He's already had five today. Picked up 18 yards. Third and one. Look at, changes the play at the line. Option. I believe he's going to keep it, get a first down. He lost the football, though. San Jose State's on top of it. First turnover of the game. The Huskies get inside the red zone and give it up. Well, last week, San Jose State was down near this area themselves and not coming away with any points. Right here, coaches coming in, I thought weren't going to run the option at all with Cody Pickett. Not so much for the turnover as the risk of having an injury. That time, you had plenty for the first down, just not able to hang on to the football. Give a little credit to San Jose State. Fumble recovered by Melvin Cook in San Jose State Spartans. Staying right with the Huskies. It's Husky football on Fox Sports Net.
Jose State Spartans have to be just ecstatic about what has taken place here in the opening 13 and a half minutes. No score. They've moved the ball well offensively on their first two drives, just missed field goals. Where the Huskies have just turned it over. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you, you prepare for so many things that an offense can do that some, you end up being stagnant uh, instead of just playing and firing through the ball. Tim Hundley lets it rip a little bit. Draw play. And this one snuffed out quickly. You know the old thing, David, you can over-prepare and maybe have too many things going on in your head with all these different plays that they do instead of just playing Husky defense. And uh, coming into the house here, you know, San Jose State, 29 and a half point underdogs. I mean, they're playing their hearts out. Sonny, I talked to Norman Joseph, the offensive coordinator for the San Jose State Spartans. That's exactly what they want to make you do. He, he said specifically, we don't have as much talent. So therefore, we're going to try to make you prepare for a lot of different things and try to confuse you. <laughs> well, so far, it's working pretty good. See if it can last for 60 minutes. There's Lob to throw. And misses by a lot. Yeah, maybe he had too much time to throw that time. <laughs> Rislop traveled around a little bit, started at the University of North Dakota, and went to junior college, and the coaches liked him and brought him out to the West Coast. One thing about Rislop is he joined the program out of the JC in the spring, so they got him for spring practice and for fall. It's interesting, in their spring game that year, they did not even play last year Marcus Arroyo. Their two-year returning quarterback, they said, we know he, he can do it. We're going to let these other guys try it. And Arroyo evidently never regained the job. Third and 10 at the 15. Out of the gun. Inside screen. A nice play by the Huskies to recover. Might have a holding call as well. Got pressure coming that time. Anthony Kelly getting back there on Rislov. And who else but Kai Ellis, <laughs> the one who was recovering. Roughing the passer on the defense. Yard penalty for the end of the run. Automatic first down. That'll keep the Spartans drive alive with just a minute to play here in the first quarter. Kai Ellis is just... That last play is a great example of what Rick Neuheisel gets by having a player like that. You send a blitz on a middle screen, you should be in trouble. But his athleticism was so great, he was able to change directions, come back, and make that play. It goes for not. But with a healthy defense, it allows the defensive staff to do a lot of different things. Ferguson, 5'5", five five running back, has had some success in the backfield. They'll throw instead. They're going for it all. Starling being guarded every step of the way by Derek Johnson. The pass ball's incomplete. One-on-one, -on -one, Derek Johnson out there with Kendrick Starling. Interesting about Starling, David, is that he didn't even play last year. JC All-American, two years in a row. Comes out, doesn't play. So he's now getting back into the game, trying to you know get himself back in shape and understanding the defenses. He actually started at Marshall. There's another pretty good wide receiver he was going to follow had he stayed there. <laughs> Didn't stay. And uh, the kid, I think the guy's name is Moss, Randy <laughs> yeah. Moss. Yeah. He might be good one day, by the way. Second and 10. <laughs> no score as the first quarter winds down. Tight end Helpman with a catch. A pickup of eight needed to get to the 45 for a first down and didn't. Craig Carruthers on the tackle. Good job by Resloff that time. Just waiting to the last minute. Turns around. His tight end just waits for the defense to go by him. See him just release out to the flat. Anthony Kelly releasing him, coming on their little rush to the quarterback. Safety a little late getting up there in coverage. Resloff very collected with two guys coming right at him. Another transfer there in Helfman. He started at BYU. He actually started at Cal, then went to BYU. Now at San Jose State. Most of the Spartans have some long chapters. The first quarter of this one has been a nice chapter for him as there's no score from Husky Stadium. It's Washington Husky football on Fox Sports Net.
back at Husky Stadium where the 14th ranked Washington Huskies were expected to have a bit of a cakewalk. Well, the first quarter was not one that the Huskies are gonna keep in any memories. San Jose State outplayed them. They're just lucky to have no score. Third and two. San Jose State converted 43% of their third downs last week as well as last season. Rizlov will run. He gets around the corner and the first down. Out of bounds at the 48. Ben Madavi getting over there to force him out of bounds. That's the various options that they can bring out of this offense that head coach Fitzhill and Norman Joseph have brought, and it seems to be making the Huskies suddenly very stagnant. Very, well, they're reactionary instead of playing. Is that fair? Well, I, I think it is a little bit, but I also, Rislop, you know, does so much. He does, like I said earlier, he's not real fast, but that time the way they had it blocked and right on the corner, they took care of business. They took Kai Ellis out of the play, went low on him again, which we saw last week at Michigan. Total yards right now, it's pretty one-sided. 115 to 53, pass knocked down. Kai Ellis in the midst of it with Terry Johnson. Hard to tell which nine did it, but the big man, eye in the quarterback's eyes, able to see it when he was gonna throw the football and able to get his big paw up there and knock it down. It's one of the things you teach your defensive linemen, especially the ends, David, when you're gonna throw out to the flat, quarterbacks tend to not get it as high as they normally do and you're able to knock them down. Look at the yards. Second and 10. San Jose State, their opening drive 10 plays, their second drive eight plays. So far, the Huskies have not shown the ability to stop them. Well, they may have stopped themselves here. Boy, even on that play, you saw the right guard, Charlie Dahoney, uh, in there, even on that call, go low on Kai Ellis, right at the old kneecap. Ten ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Field second down. I'll make it second and 15. Here's Love under pressure. Gets it off. The tackle behind the line of scrimmage is Jamal Broussard. Ben Madavi in on it again. Ben Madavi, that time out there in the flat on Broussard. But you know, the interesting formation, they had both tight ends. You see him split out to the sides here. Gonna come underneath. And Ben Madavi reading it, following the play from the inside, which that's what you want your linebackers to do, David, is be able to go to the flow and get to the ball. Tough thing for Madavi and his crew is, while they covered that perfectly, there were so many different options off it that the San Jose State offensive coaches may have seen something they'll try later. Well, this is where the UW defense wants to really toughen up on third down and long. 18, in fact. Rizlov over the middle, complete for a first down to Chris Pauley. It's gonna be very close. You're gonna see the young man come out. They have given him the first down too quickly. Yeah, I think it is. Wow, that's a favorable spot for the Huskies. You're gonna see him come out and come down this direction right here, David, and then what happens is the safety, as the play develops, you see where great Carruthers is, and when the ball is thrown, that's an excellent throw, but a little bit too much room. Fourth down, they're gonna go for it, and the Husky crowd makes noise for the first time today. Rizlov trying to sneak, has no room, has to try a second effort. It's gonna be tight. The offensive line got no surge at all. Not a big offensive line. Well, no surge at all, bounced back. I'm surprised there wasn't a Husky coming up quicker. He may have just been able to snuck around that left side a little bit, David. That's what defensive line coach Randy Hart preaches all the time. Just to push back, get the leverage. Sticks are coming out. I don't know, but it looks like Fitzhill and Rick Newhouse are right on the line, don't they? <laughs> you know, those two coaches both have uh, doctorate degrees. It's an intellectual fest here. Here's the fourth down measurement, first down, San Jose State. Another lengthy drive by the Spartans. Watch those guys down front, Josh Miller, Manas Hopeway, everybody's down low. One man right there trying to cut there a little bit late. Great Carruthers, a little late getting to the outside, coming up to push the quarterback backwards and uh, able to pick up the first down. 
Time of possession right now is nine and a half minutes for San Jose State. Huskies have got five. Ferguson looking to cut back, slides out to the 37 yard line. Ferguson now has six carries for 37 yards. Now you look at Lamont's Walker, the, the right line guard are now pulling around the corner and see a pushback, cuts back right up in there. Marquise Cooper flowing down the line from the left side, able to be in on the tackle with Madavi. But vision, it, it's hard to believe a guy 5'5 five, five has great vision, but you know, he's just hiding behind a big lineman. Pretty quick. Very quick. Second and five. Rizlop's got a man wide open. Complete at the eight, all the way down to the two. Tied end, Courtney Anderson, all six foot seven of him, got open and the Spartans are knocking on the door. Greg Carruthers saved the touchdown in retreat. Little play action throwback right here. Pauly, the wide receiver, had gone down and gone to the post position. And the big tight end there, I tell you what, 6'7", the tallest tight end ever to play at San Jose State, hauls it in. Great Carruthers again in coverage, but a little late getting to uh, Anderson, the tight end. That's great film work because Michigan beat him on the same play. First and two, a handoff to Ferguson coming in motion, trying to get around the corner to the pylon. No! no. He's out at the one. They hand it off to the motion man. We told you early on they're going to bring you the whole kitchen sink. <laughs> yeah, they that do. was the faucet. Right there coming in motion across the backfield. Evan Benjamin just not able to get out there, but Greg Carruthers is. Yes, his hand went across inside the pylon. Unfortunately, the ball was in his right hand. How about the five foot five guy going in motion behind the offensive line which yeah. you can't, when you can't see him? Reminds me of Nigel Burton, the old safety that played for the Huskies. Now the power set. The three in the backfield and a double tight end. Riggs gets stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Well, I don't think this is San Jose State's best offensive uh, formation. You know, they're better when they kind of do a little wide out, go to the outside, maybe have Rislov turn the corner, forcibly go out, option runner pass. 15th play of the drive right there. Third and two at the two. They're gonna go power again. Looking to take the lead. Around left with some room and walking into the end zone is the walk-on freshman, Ezekiel Staples. And the San Jose State Spartans have stunned Husky Stadium with a six to nothing lead. Good job of blocking on the corner. Watch the Huskies collide right there. There's three Spartans and three Huskies. First, Santos, go, go ahead, David. First carry for the walk-on from Los Angeles. The true freshman, and it's a touchdown. It's not a bad way to enter college football. Bad news for the Huskies, though. Marquise Cooper limping off with his knee. The extra point is good. Well, when this one rolls across the bottom of scores across the country and the Spartans lead at seven, nothing, people are gonna be a bit surprised. 11.23 left in the second half, a wake up call has just happened at Husky Stadium on Fox Sports Net. San Jose State Spartans are flat out dominating the Washington Huskies here at Husky Stadium. The score is actually misleading. And Scott Rizlov has just led his club on a 15 play, 85 yard drive over five minutes. Huskies. Charles Frederick will take it at the goal line. Got some room if he can get by, but he can't. 
The wedge had opened up an alley down the right sideline, but Frederick couldn't get past the 25, and that's where the Huskies will start for their third offensive possession of the game. Rich Alexis over right. Picks up nine, his largest game of the day. Largest game of the day, and the young man we featured last week, Dan Dix, in for Elliott Zajac, 78, out there to help him get around the corner. His high school coach, Bill Heckler, has got to be very excited about what he's seeing. Oh, there's no question. Husky offense now can start asserting themselves a little bit and see if Cody Pickett will open it up just a tad. Second and one, good opportunity to let it fly. Instead, they're gonna try to pound the ground. Alexis will get a first down. Looking behind, Dixon and Newton again on the right side. I like that. Let it fly or pound the ground. I like that, dude, that's good. Oh, I wish I meant it. <laughs> the crowd kind of with a mocking bit of applause to the first down. Well, there haven't been a lot of them for the Husky side today, and uh, Second quarter, 10 something to go here, 10 20. The Huskies have only run 13 plays. It's number 14. Pickett will throw and has Reggie Williams complete. Quincy Washington on the coverage at just 5 foot 11, 161. First catch for Reggie here in the second quarter. Well, the Huskies would like to see a little bit more of that pressure from San Jose State. They brought some extra people on that play, and anytime you can get a one-on-one -on -one with Reggie Williams on the outside, that's got to be what Keith Gilbertson's looking for. Cody Pickett now four of six. Rick looks a little anxious on the sidelines. Double tight end again. Finds where he gets out to the 42-yard line. A little bit of the uh, Scott Rusloff for San Jose State at that time. Uh, Cody Pickett doing the same, trying to get to his tight end. Just a semi-roll right here, throwback. Watch Kevin Ware pounding up there. You know what? He had a big game last week, I thought, against Michigan, and uh, today he's. Uh, Turn it on again. Spartans have to be pleased defensively there because the one thing they want to be able to do this year they couldn't do last year was run to the football. They had six guys in on that. Pickett looking for a whole big bunch to Paul Arnold who can't come down with it. Melvin Cook on the coverage. Yeah, thrown a little bit to the inside to Paul Arnold. Try to get it. He was on the outside with a lot of cushion to the sideline. Trying to time it just right. Pull in a Reggie Williams tight reception over the DB but couldn't quite handle it. Cook's the only returning starter in that secondary. Did a nice job there. Yeah, see where that ball was, see where the numbers are. Look at that room out to that sideline, David. Had a little bit extra turf to throw the ball. See, now you're being an offensive guy again, because a defensive coach would just be talking about how perfect this coverage was. <laughs> you're back on, the fever's over. <laughs> it's gone. Third and four, Huskies are just one of three on third down. Cody with a lot of time. Totally misreads Reggie Williams. And the drive comes to a halt at the 42-yard line. Unless the gambler knew Heisel's in the house, but no, it's not. Derek McLaughlin will come in to kick. Well, the Huskies are just kind of walking off the field, and that doesn't look like Husky football. You know, if, it's, uh, if you're going to get off, let's get off the field and uh, look a little lackadaisical out there. McLaughlin, who had seven punts this year, averaging 37 yards, had two touchbacks against Michigan the same amount he had all of last year. Pauly is deep. Lachlan shooting for the sideline. Instead, Pauly will take a fair catch at the nine. So he keeps that one inside the 20. Playing a little field position game with the San Jose State Spartans. Who we'll have the seven nothing lead and everything on the stat sheet shows what has taken place here in the first 16 minutes, which is truly that it has been all Spartans. Well, there's no question, Fitz Hill and his staff have, have them prepared. That's their whole process of what they're trying to do, is to almost out-prepare you. And 
against USC last year, it worked. They it, played USC last year and only lost 21-10. Now against Colorado, it's 51-15. It didn't work quite as well. <laughs> Here's Lob with a little misdirection. He'll throw out of it. And just a pickup of two or three, maybe only two. A lot of work, not a lot of gain there. Well, again, you see the little sleight of hand by the quarterback and coming out on the naked boot, trying to find his tight end. Huskies are using their speed. Let's see the little play right here. A little quick shuttle. Couldn't quite see the number. Looked like it may have been Kai Ellis that lost his footing over there. No, it's Terry Johnson and getting to the quarterback. A lot of times on this kind of play, David, it's the angle of pursuit. Being able, don't go oversell yourself to the ball or the play action. Stay disciplined enough to re recognize the play coming back at you. Marcus Helton was their set receiver there. He has cut three. Wide open here is Pauley. And as the ball comes loose, he's out to the 30-yard line. Charles Pauley, Joe Lubendine on the coverage. Scott Rislov is 12 of 17 for 144 yards so far. Well, almost up to last week's numbers against Arkansas State. And most importantly for Coach Fitzhill, no turnovers. That's why he got the job. And so you ask every single guy in the San Jose State's program, how come they bench Marcus Arroyo, two-year starter, they say, because this guy takes care of the ball better. This love has come back. First and 10 to 29. Crossing route, complete big hit. Chris Massey comes up and meets Kendrick Starling. A completion and a pickup of five. Kendrick Starling thought he had some room to run. You see him come out on this route. Chris Massey down to the lower part of the screen. Coming all the way across the field. And this is a big guy. He's almost 200 pounds. Chris Massey out there to lay it on him. As he had that big sack against Navarre last week and four tackles. He worked very hard in the offseason. Handoff goes to Ferguson again. The little man tries to sneak through the line. Davi meets him there, not a big pickup. Huskies came a little pressure on that play. But Madavi hung tight, stayed disciplined in the middle that time. And I tell you, that little Mighty Mouse is pretty quick and pretty strong for a little guy, able to gain some extra yardage. Here's something that will bother Tim Huntley a little bit, Sonny, against Michigan. The Wolverines converted 53% of their third down. San Jose State, four of eight so far today. And with a third down here and four, Rizlov incomplete for Wooten. And the Husky defense will it'll stop well that time a nice hope boy back there putting some pressure on Rislov had to get rid of the ball a little quicker than he had to on the timing route out to the sideline young man's had a great first half michael carr will punt only averaged 33 yards per punt this one's a high hanger doesn't turn over frederick oh, what fair turn catches it and then has a hard time handling and thinks about going realizes he fair caught it can the Husky offense find itself a rhythm? They trail 7-0 against San Jose State. We find out next on Fox Sports Net. Cody Prickett leads his troops to the line, looking for some offense. They've only had 85 yards so far. Draw to Alexis with room and a first down. And Rich Alexis may be beginning to find his groove a bit. 13 yards on that. See the San Jose State defense kind of dropping off. Safeties are going back down the hash marks. 
see it right up there. Look at the hole. That's a nice delay to Rich Alexis. Good blocking downfield by the Huskies. Safeties had fallen off so far. It took him a long time to get back up to get in on the play. Keith Gilbertson and his crew may be beginning to figure out what San Jose State's doing. They're playing a vastly different defensive game than they did against Arkansas State because they only blitzed once in that whole game. Today they've let it fly a few times. Charles Frederick with the reception for a pickup of six. Out there working against Tristan George. Fine looking freshman himself here. I mean, he coming in true freshman playing at Husky Stadium. That time with a nice tackle, although a big first down gain for the Huskies that time, picking up six yards. Tristan George actually was offered a scholarship by Washington, but his mother has cancer. He's from Berkeley, California, so he decided to stay as close to home as he possibly could. Actually, I apologize, he suffered a stroke. Pickett is taken down. And a big first down play goes for not as the Spartans get their first sack of the game. It's Brian Foreman. Well, sometimes you got a double tight end formation, two wide outs. You see them all stacked inside there. If you're number one man, they sent one tight end. He's covered like a blanket. The man I looked like Cody Pickett wanted to go to right in the middle. I mean, you're sunk. You don't have any backs to lay it off to on the sideline. Third and eight now. And the Huskies are just one of four on third down. Converted 50% against Michigan. Pickett looking to throw. And it's short to Alexis. And another drive comes up short. Not a very good pass that time. Cody Pickett kind of just floated it out there. And it <laughs> would have taken a great effort to even come up with that football. Well, in 1995, these teams matched up, and it was tied 14-14 at halftime before the Huskies were able to explode out to a 34-20 win behind 254 yards by Napoleon Kaufman. Rick Neuheisel may need to go into the record books to tell his kids that that's the model they need to follow today. Lachlan into punt. Low kick. Bounces at the 30, is picked up. And then falling to the ground quickly with the, oh no, I actually have the football, is Melvin Cook. Well, you can see Melvin Cook didn't want to turn it over, David. Probably a smart play. I don't think he meant to catch it in the first place. Well, Rick Neuheisel was wondering if it's clubs in shape. He's going to have to find out because Scott Rizloff has them running just about everywhere right now. Yeah, Scott Rizloff is in command. Uh, coach has done a good job for San Jose State, like we mentioned. Goodsell's got to be proud about making that decision so far in this game, David, about who's his starting quarterback. Sonny, we talked about the running game. That's what changes time of possession. They have just 10 carries, 46 yards. We talked about Corey Dillon's 222 yards. Napoleon Kaufman, that game I was mentioning a few moments ago, ran for 254 yards against these Spartans in 1995. And Rick Neuheisel has got to be wondering where things are going. So Rizlov brings his crew out again. He is 13 of 19 for 149 yards. And actually they have switched quarterbacks. They'll go to Marcus Arroyo. That is the man who was the starter last year. He flares it out to Pauly. And Arroyo's complete the first time. Now, you might think that Arroyo, Sonny, is a guy who gets benched on a team with San Jose, uh, like San Jose State three and nine last year, but he actually holds the NCAA record for single game passing efficiency when he threw for 476 yards last year against Nevada and five touchdowns for a 298. I don't understand pass efficiency, but that sounds like an awful lot. That's an awful lot. <laughs> Anytime you get over that 100 mark, it's an awful lot. It's better than Matt Hasselbeck's day the other day that had his, in the preseason, when he had his passing efficiency to look like my GPA. <laughs> Was it like 2.6? <laughs> Second and seven. Roy to throw. Throws it out there, almost intercepted by Derek Johnson, who suffocates another receiver today. Well, that's why Arroyo lost the job, as he throws the ball up for grabs too often. Polly, the intended receiver. Not a bad throw, though. You look at this throw, it's, it's out there, and, and uh, Derek Johnson in good position, though, good coverage that time. Almost come up with a great pick. The Huskies could have used the pick right there in, in Spartan territory. Rizlov is on the sidelines giving signals and seems to be fine. Yeah, it doesn't look like an injury, and I'm sure Fitzhill has a reason, and 
wants to keep the attitude at a positive level. San Jose State has to take their second time out. They lead the Huskies. Seven to nothing with 4.18 left here in the first half. It's Husky football on Fox Sports Net. San Jose State leads Washington 7-0 with 4.18 left, and there are not a lot of smiles here at Husky Stadium right now. As a third and seven for the San Jose State Spartans. Marcus Arroyo, their quarterback. Crossing route complete, Paul, and he breaks free. He's at the 40 with two men to beat. He won't go all the way, but he's down to the 25. And San Jose State continues to slice and dice the Huskies. Well, maybe Fitzhill brought in Marcus Arroyo. You see it right over here on the right side, going all the way right there. Sorry, a little late on that one, but you know he uh, sees the passing attack being opened up, David. And maybe Arroyo's a little bit thrower downfield. Remember a few of those passes we saw earlier from Rislov that weren't quite on mark when the guys were wide open. 42-yard pickup there. They have seen something. Paul, five receptions for 89 yards. He got 41 last year. Look to Ferguson. And Carruthers comes up and blows up the play. We I mean, have seen it happen before. Quarterbacks have, have uh, had some success. They're throwing the ball pretty well, but they're, they're you know they're missing open guys. And here's a guy that he can reward again and keep on a positive note. Marcus Arroyo come in and made some big completions. Sonny, the Huskies look like they're on their heels. One thing Fitzhill has done here is against Arkansas State, everything was vanilla. And the Huskies had to go back to their film against USC, Colorado, Arizona State last year to try to find out what types of things he'd actually run. Because last week they actually outcounted their opponent. Ferguson. Gets Put down. <laughs> yeah. Both linebackers that time, Lobandon and Madavi there to meet him. I was going to say he got scrunched, but he already <laughs> came that way. <laughs> It'll be third and ten. San Jose State five of ten on third down. A little man averaging four yards a carry. Average five last year. Shotgun. Three receivers to the near side. Roy had a throw. It looks like he's going for Polly again. It's incomplete. Derek Johnson, who's having a very good first half of football on the coverage again. That time, Derek Johnson, no big cushion, unlike last time we saw where Chris Massey lost a little bit of that, had too much cushion between he and the receiver. This time, Derek Johnson in great position to have a, a you know, that time a Royal had to deliver the ball a little bit high because of that coverage. Nick Gillum come back in to kick a field goal. He is 0 for 2 today. The Huskies have dodged bullets on two occasions already. 43-yard attempt. Has enough leg, and the Spartans lead the Huskies with 2.20 to play in the first half, 10 to nothing. Who would have thunk, huh? But, the, you know, the Spartans are coming in to Husky Stadium. Fitz Hill, I mean, this is a veteran of Desert Storm. Got these guys ready to play. Four medals in Desert Storm. You think he knows how to get it going? The passing game of the San Jose State Spartans you has gotta, carried the load. You got a lot of DBs out there, but when you're crossing guys in your routes, moving them from right to left, left to right, sneaking tight ends out like that, behind a guy going to the post pattern, you better be disciplined. You better know who you have. This time, you can't rely on somebody else to help you out in the middle. That time, Chris Massey, a little bit late on Broussard. Excuse me, on Polly. They have four pass plays over 24 yards for that triumphant today, and the total yards is just a whitewash, 193 to 55. Tim Unley told me for the ball game he was concerned about third down defense and big play breakdowns. Big play breakdowns, four plays over 24 yards, and third down, 5 of 11. I think he's probably still concerned about that. Well, you have all those guys on those crossing routes, like I said, and then they do play action, and 
misdirection fakes and stuff, but uh, it makes it tough. You want to try and get pressure on the quarterback, but you don't have enough guys to bring them. Screen play to Alexis. Got some room. Still on his feet and goes down at the 42. Two minute offense now, David. Khalif Barnes out in front, clearing space. Set up very well, and that time Rich Alexis able to get some motor going with him. See how the Huskies can do in this two minute set. He's big for momentum, pick it. Reddick complete to the 46. Clock works its way under in two minutes. That was a nice catch that time. We saw Pat Reddick drop one earlier. That was a lot easier in the ball game, but that time, ball thrown slightly behind him, able to reel it in. 37 of 12. Throwing again. Got Reddick over the middle again. It's though they finally have put the foot on the accelerator. Well, you know, the Spartans are playing somewhat of a pre de prevent defense. I mentioned it earlier that both safeties are going back in coverage straight down those hash marks which means there's a lot of area downfield in about that 10 to 20 yard range. He should be able to settle in and get a nice completion. Timeout, let's see if the Huskies can finish the deal on their two minute drive as they trail it 10 nothing at Husky Stadium against the San Jose State Spartans. It's Husky football on Fox Sports Net. Full house at Husky Stadium. A little shell shocked as Spartans lead 10 0. Huskies in the midst of a two minute drive with Cody Pickett's three of three so far. Run the draw to Alexis. He's got big room through the middle on his feet all the way out to the 20 yard line. Spartans expecting Cody Pickett to drop back and throw something downfield. Good call by the Husky offense to run the draw that time. And I noticed Dan Dix did the smart thing. He got out of the way of Rich Alexis so he could make up. Pick up that first down. Oh, and Rich gets that body rolling at 62 20. You should pick it complete again in the hole of the zone. There it is, David. I pointed out last time. They're just settling in there. The Spartans are giving them a lot of space down the middle of the football field, just dropping straight back the hash marks. Pat that time, Pat Reddick settling right in there. Third reception of the drive. Rick Neuheiser will take the Huskies' first time out. Now the Huskies with a minute 20 have plenty of time with the ball on the five to get in the end zone. And what a momentum boost this would be for the Huskies who have really been just flat out outplayed in every facet of this football game so far. Rick Neuheisel probably ready to do fire and brimstone and get a touchdown. He can just remind these guys, these guys are division one athletes. You gotta play them. Well, you don't wanna, you gotta get over last week and play this ball game. But right here you see Cody Pickett with the screen play out to Rich Alexis. Watch the blocking up front. That time Khalif Barnes out there to help him get open. And right here, Pat Reddick having to go behind him. Playing soft zone. You see it right here. The linebackers are dropping back, which means the two safeties are coming back this way, leaving a lot of room for Cody Pickett to find his receivers. And a good call this time with the draw play. Spartans thinking the Huskies are going down. Now right down in here, you'll see the space. Right in there, the receivers are just being smart, selling in, and Cody Pickett is able to find him, David. Now the Huskies have to get going in the red zone. They did a nice job against Michigan here. Three wide receivers, Alexis to single back, drop play through the middle, pulling through to the goal line. Did he get in? Looks like a half a ball short. Lock continues to tick now, down to just about a minute. Huskies will take their time and bring in their power set. Alexis now getting it going. 10 carries for 62 yards. That's a 20 yard reception on this drive. Second and goal. Alexis, football's loose. 
San Jose State has the football at the goal line. Failure to execute inside the red zone. And the San Jose State Spartans. Luke LaHaren has come up with one. Bad snap or just couldn't hold on to the football. You saw it right there. Cody Pickett not having a handle on it right there. He just loses it himself. Looked like a clean snap, David. He just lost the handle. San Jose State is not out of the woodwork yet. They at ball is on the two yard line. It's really about on the one and a quarter. They cannot just down it. They're gonna have to at least surge forward. Arroyo will do exactly that and avoid the safety. Huskies have the option to use a timeout, but I think they'd like this half to come to an end. Yeah, I think they need to do that, go in and regroup, get their attitude back up. And instead, I think they may be. Timeout Washington. Well, I think Rick Neuhaisel may go fire and brimstone. <laughs> He's got to be a little surprised about what is taking place here in the first half as the worst defense in college football last year has shut out the Washington Huskies. Now, how many starters returning from that defense? None. None. So it, it's not the same guys, but this is a program that allowed 51 points to Colorado, 53 to Arizona State, and 41 to Stanford last year. It was supposed to be a get well game. Well, you know, you know the thing is, though, David, you know, when you play this game and you, and you, you, you go out to a big game on the road like Michigan and not to make an excuse for them, but sometimes that enters in the mind. They see San Jose State on paper. They look last year, they're the worst defense in the world. These guys are a makeshift offensive line. I mean, look at the homestand, the first easy win for the season, oh my gosh. And all of a sudden, reality hits you when you get on the field, <laughs> and those well, guys aren't that bad. This is the streak that's supposed to allow the Huskies to break the modern record for the longest winning streak at Husky Stadium. As the record 17 from 91 to 93. They're sitting on 14 right now, but they're also sitting 30 minutes away from losing the streak. Wyoming, not a powerhouse at two and nine last year. Idaho ranked by Sports Illustrated as the worst Division I college football team. Royal will sneak forward and be able to get out to about the three where the Huskies will take yet another timeout. Well, I look through the goals of Everyone involved here, and I don't think that Rick Neuheisel can say many of them have been checked off right now. It's got to be very surprising to him. A team in the Huskies that have won 76% of their home openers, and they have not lost since Arizona State here on the 16th of October, 1999. That's 14 games. I remember that one, Sonny. I was up in the upper deck about section 51, and... A beautiful day. I just started looking at Mount Rainier because the <laughs> ball game wasn't worth watching for a while. Were you, a while. Were you hanging upside down up there? or uh? I just kicked back and put the hair feet back and checked out the gorgeous view over Lake Washington because that was the day where uh, the defense of Arizona State has done something similar to what Ronnie Lee and the uh, Fitz Hill and his crew have done here. That's Ronnie Lee right there, defensive coordinator for the San Jose State Spartans, and he hasn't had this kind of success here in this building. He's a Washington State Cougar. And I know he hasn't had this success because when I talked to him yesterday, I said, did you ever win in this building? And he said, um, um, I go, okay, that's a no. <laughs> uh, Pac-10 has not been a pretty place for San Jose State. Those three wins all coming against Stanford in three consecutive years. A seven and O lifetime against the Washington Huskies. And they will just down it here. The half will come to a close. No one would have thunk it, as they say. The Spartans lead 10-0 as a Husky crowd is in Philadelphia four. Oh, they're there. Throwing boo birds to the Washington Huskies as they leave the field for the half the trailing 10-0. The San Jose State Spartans completely dominating the first 30 minutes. What happens in the next 30? We'll find out as the 14th ranked Washington Huskies behind Rick Neuheisel will try to play comeback kids again on Fox Sports Net.
The boats on Lake Washington. The shell shock surprised, stunned Husky Stadium crowds. Ready for the second half as San Jose State leads 10 0. Ball game started. San Jose State moved the football and they missed some opportunities. David, you're right. They did it from the beginning and then. We talked about their quarterback taking care of the ball here. Cody Pickett down the red zone loses it. Then the passing attack of Rizlov, who was outstanding while he was in the ball game, hitting his big tight end, which led to their first touchdown. And then right here, young freshman coming in, going around the corner for the touchdown. First carry, a touchdown against the Huskies. They switch quarterbacks, and Charles Paul, he was the dividend. Got the dividend out of it with a big play. The big play is continuing to haunt the Huskies. 10-0 lead after finally making a field goal. Finally a little offense, Sonny, at the end of the two, final two minutes. Start finding a nice cushion in the zone downfield. Cody Pickett finding Pat Reddick on that one. However, on this play, Cody Pickett should never attempt to hand the ball off when you don't have control of it yourself. So the turnovers and just generally being outplayed is the story of the first half as We'll have a touchback. The Huskies will start offensively on their 20. And the first half stats tell a lot of the story, remembering that the Huskies drove 75 yards on the final drive to get those. It didn't get any dividends. 242 yards to 179. First downs are the same. Passing yards, 193 to 115. And time of possession, 1851 for San Jose State. And under Rick Neuhausel, the Huskies are just 5 and 8 when they lose the time of possession battle. And it's not a field position game. They're just getting outplayed. See what adjustments Keith Gilbertson can make as Cody Pickett opens up the second half. The Rich Alexis open field brought down, but not before a pickup at 12. Melvin Cook was sitting on an island and made the play. Reggie Williams with a nice block there, but Sonny, this is just jumps out at you. Nothing has clicked yet for this team. Well, look at those two nice drives, 65 and 78 yards, and you expect to see touchdown points after that, but no, what you see is two fumbles instead. And on games where you have to really get yourself up to play, you can't have turnovers yourself at home. Last three times these teams have played, the Huskies scored 53, 34, 52. Looking to run again, Alexis is stuck the line. Sonny, it's very clear that there's an emphasis here today to get the running game going. But on the other end of things, they, their five best players probably all take part in the passing game. So how does Keith Gilbertson balance that? Well, you know, it, it's got to be very tough when you look at the great athletes. We talk about the depth of the receivers for the University of Washington. And you're right, everything we read about all week, ever since the Michigan game and before the Michigan game is, what about the running game? Can we run the football? And and sometimes uh, you get overemphasized in that department and forget about the rest of it. Pick it is through 15 times in the first half. It's Reggie Williams for the second time here for a pickup of about seven. It'll be third and two. Yeah, Reggie not real productive in that first half. Looks a little dinged up to me, but uh, that time uh, able to bring in the reception in front of Washington. And, you know, Cody Pickett as well. You know, it's uh, you look at these ball games and, and you can see the quarterback's head sometimes. And granted, he hasn't had multiple receivers out in sets. But he seems to be honing in a little bit, and uh, they have a primary receiver. You can make a good point. We haven't seen the four wide. We haven't seen a lot of those different things that they they showed. Alexis powers through and will pick up a first down. Staying on this conversation, Sonny, as a quarterback, who last week by the end of the first half had thrown 33 times. How about getting rhythms and things of that nature? Is it hard for a guy like Cody right now to get a rhythm going? When, he, when he's thrown 15 times and the offense can't get going? Well, you, I'm not sure if it's his rhythm. Uh, rhythm does seem to be off a little bit. We've seen some passes a little bit out of the ordinary for Cody Pickett. But now we do have a three uh, receiver set. Let's see if he can throw the ball downfield. Where is the single tight end? Alexis the back. Quick hitter. Almost taken away. Knocked in the air and falls to the ground. And the San Jose State defense, which had two touchdowns in their opener, one of those by Carlos Gustas, and he uh, just about had another one right here. Husky still doing the quick step drop. You can see it here, just quick turn around, boom, and throw the football. Pretty good coverage out there. Husky's very lucky that one wasn't picked off. Slide of Anchorage, Alaska, Wilbur Hooks turn it into a defensive back. Well, that's what they teach you, David. If you can't bring it in yourself, you better make sure no one on the other team grabs it. Second and 10, three wide again. Same formation as the last play. Pick it with a lot of time, finds Eddie Jackson complete at about the 49-yard line. It'll be short of the first down, but a good pickup of seven. And great work by the offensive line. 
great work the offensive line, allowing Cody Pickett time to look away from his primary receiver and look back the other direction, find an open man, and that time Eddie Jackson, you gotta be able to find him this way. Look at his head. Cody Pickett looking to the right side, but ready to let go of the football. Not open, comes back to a second or maybe third receiver in Eddie Jackson. And that's, you're right, David. The offensive line gave him time to, to do that. Offensive play is just 34 for the Huskies. That's a great sign of how you don't have rhythm. Blitz coming. Pickett gets it off with a little flare out to Alexis. He's got the first down into San Jose State territory down to the 43. Boy, when that play started, I thought, oh man, Cody's gonna get nailed in the back. That time able to get it off, set up the screen. We've got Vic Butler and Kelly Barnes out there blocking for a rich Alexis. You see it happening right here. I thought he was gonna really get it. Look at these guys out front up here. Set up really nice right in there. And Rich Alex is not able to keep his feet to gain more yardage. 104 total yards for Rich Alex. Another productive day for the junior, Pearl Springs, Florida. And he's going the whole way, just like the Michigan game, David. Uh, no backups in and tailbacks. So yeah, Soap was the only guy who had a carry in that game other than Alexis. Rich again rumbles over the left side for a pickup of about four. That's his 14th carry of the game. I don't think a lot of people knew that Rich Alexis was a back you can put the whole workload on. He's proved that. <laughs> well, it looks like the coaching staff would decided that Rich Alexis is going to be their man. He's working hard. You see him breathing deep right there. And, you know, he's responded well. I remember after that big run last week, 59 yards, they came back, handed off to him on a delay, dropped the middle, and uh, kind of surprised me. But the coaches have a lot of confidence in his off-season conditioning as well. Second and seven. Williams is on the near side in single coverage. There will be a draw to Alexis. And he's brought down very quickly. With nice pursuit. It's Luke LaHara, the leading tackler of the San Jose State Spartans. He's the WAC Defensive Player of the Week. Yeah, yeah this guy, Luke LaHara, played well the beginning of last year. Got injured, hurt his knee, and then against Arizona State, and they redshirted him, but he's back in there. I'm sure Fitz Hill's glad that he's nice and healthy. I think he might be a pretty good athlete. He threw for 3,500 yards as a quarterback in a rush for over 1,000 in high school. Now playing linebacker. 30 for seven on third down conversion. Third and six here. Cody with a lot of time. Kevin Ware juggles, catches, and leans forward for the first down. The big body from Spring, Texas, able to get himself spread out and use all 6'3", 255 of his newly chiseled frame. Well, he came from the left, he's going out to the flat. Look at the pass, not really on the mark again from Cody Pickett, but Kevin Ware able to concentrate and know where the first down marker is and gain the extra yard for the first down. 11 plays on this drive. Ware last year caught just seven passes, already has that many this year. Here's Alexis. Lowers his shoulder, and we see a little bounce in the step of the Huskies right out of the chute here. Well, they got fired up at halftime. That's why they have those meetings at, during the halftime. But that was a little play out of the San Jose State playbook. <laughs> they have a little toss out to Rich Alexis. Fake one way, toss it back, make it to the left. Good job. Looking good running around the corner there. Alexis changed his off-season training. He went to just play basketball to try to bring his body weight down. He averaged 6.2 yards a carry as a freshman, then just 3.1 yards a carry as a sophomore. And they're gonna continue to work Alexis on a second and one. He tries to scoot for the first down, but will not get it. It'll be third down. And Alexis actually here calling to be taken out. Braxton Clement, the recipient of the Curtis Williams scholarship this year. The first ever is uh, not available. Lexus uh, may have taken a shot. Chris Singleton will be in at running back, the six foot, 195 pound sophomore on a big third and one, and they'll give it to him. And he tries to go forward for the first down, despite having his legs taken out from under him, and will get it. C.J. Arnold flying through from his strong safety position. And Chris Singleton gets his first carry of the year after having 14 last year. Well, Chris Singleton got a lot of work this week, David, in practices, uh, got a lot of reps. He should be ready to play. I'm sure he's happy to be on the field, although he's sure he hopes that Rich Alexis is nothing seriously wrong with him. Rick 
Weisel said this week that they won't play any of the freshmen other than Nate Robinson unless something happens crazy this week. Pickett looking for the end zone for Reggie Williams. Reggie could not break free from a much smaller defender. The ball's incomplete. Well, Melvin Cook came up on the short end of that coverage over there, bumped Reggie Williams, knocked him off his route. Reggie Williams is going to have to work and get away from that. Can't allow little defensive backs like that to knock you out of your pattern. Ronnie Lee, the defensive coordinator of the Spartans, who mentioned earlier the former Cougars, I asked him about how he deals with the smaller guys. He said, big wide receivers hate it when you go at their legs. <laughs> Although on that one, he just came up and shook him right in the shoulder pad. 15th play of a statement drive. Cody gets take, breaks through the tackle, avoiding the sack, throwing toward the end zone. Six for the Dodds! Wilbur hooks! Looks like a penalty as well, roughing the passer, David. It is roughing the passer. It is a touchdown for Washington. Cody Pickett making a play. That was a great reverse by you, David. Looked like a sack, but he was able to escape that and make the throw. Wilbur Hooks found the end zone. Wilbur Hooks did a great job. He came down, he was looking into the post area, reversed his field towards the sideline, and what a great job by Cody Pickett to find the young man in the end zone. Hooks, his first touchdown I mean, since two years ago. Right here, it looked like a sack for sure with the LeHaron coming up the middle on the blitz. But right there, Cody Pickett gets really rocked, but he's able to get the pass off, and Will Hooks, touchdown dog. And, uh, Huskies are right back in this. On the defense, the 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. That Extra is what you call a statement drive. 15 plays, 80 yards, six minutes and 11 seconds. Keith Gilbertson's crew came out with focus after being shut out in the streak of 241 games. Without a shutout goes to 242, third longest in the NCAA. John Anderson in for the extra point. Anderson, who was just two of three at Michigan after 34-37 last year, hits this one. And the Washington Huskies are on the board. How do the Spartans answer the surge from the Huskies? We find out coming up. Husky football on Fox Sports Net. San Jose State still holding to a three-point lead, but Cody Pickett has led the Huskies on an impressive drive. 15 plays, 80 yards, capped with a little athleticism. Boy, right there, lucky to get away from LaHaren, as we mentioned, and really knowing where his receivers are. And Will Hooks did just did a good job. You're taught if, you're, if there's a breakdown, your quarterback's in trouble, turn around, better get to an open area, and that time Will Hooks did. Third touchdown of Hooks' career on that 22-yard pass. And that's six minutes and 11 seconds of possession. Before that drive, they had only had it for 11 minutes and nine seconds. How's that for a dramatic change? Well, let's see if we see a little pooch kick here from Anderson. It is a pooch, because the ball was up the 50-yard line off the penalty. And a fair catch taken at the six by Kendrick Starling. Arroyo in at quarterback. And overthrows Pauley. Jafar Williams coming out of the backfield on the coverage. Manas Hopoy that time in there on pressure on Arroyo. And this, look at these possessions, David. 
jumps out at you with a 10, 8, 15 plays. They slowed down a little. <laughs> but that only. one 15 play drive was a, a great drive by San Jose State. Rizlov was very successful early, is now on the bench. And Marcus Arroyo is back at quarterback, second and 10. They'll run to Ferguson. And the five foot five scat back changes direction to scoot forward for four. It's good to see Marquise Cooper back in the game. Nothing against Joe Labandon, but Marquise Cooper coming off the big game last week. Got hurt a little bit when the Spartans scored in the first half. It's good to see him back on the field. And he can help out his teammate Ben Madavi, who had nine tackles in the first half today. Madavi's career high, by the way, just is 15 against USC. Cooper had 11 last week, all solo. See if the Huskies can put a little pressure on the quarterback on this play. Roll out by Arroyo. And dropped. Wooden. Tuati Wooden out there, David. That's a big break for the Huskies. A good throw also by Arroyo. And the first three and out other than when the Spartans were trying to run out the clock at the end of the first half today for the Huskies defense. Pretty good route, got Rock Alexander turned around momentarily. Ball was right on the button. I tell you, that's a little frustrating from a quarterback when you want to try and move the ball downfield. Wooten has some good experience too. Caught 37 balls last year. Punt by Carr is not a particularly good one. Bounces at the 45 and then goes the Husky direction. Well, coming off a fantastic 15 play drive, the Huskies now have an, or excuse me, a 16 play touchdown drive. The Huskies have the opportunity now inside San Jose State territory to really take control of this football game with 7.42 left in the third. Well, Cody Pickett, statistics look pretty good, 15 to 22. He's missed a couple easy ones, but that last drive made a couple nice throws. Does See if we can get those three wideouts involved in this drive, David. Go three again, where is your tight end, Williams? on the near side that's where Reggie's looking actually it's Eddie Jackson similarly sized and Jackson catches it for a first down good protection that time I was watching the O-line that time nobody's getting close to the quarterback Cody Pick with a lot of time to get himself set get those feet set and throw the ball to the sideline I tell you if you don't have your feet set when you're throwing the sideline you, you, you see the ball flare on you a little bit and could be defensed pretty easily. That offensive line had a good game at Michigan also. They only allowed two sacks and 45 throws to a team that led the nation last year in sacks. This is Alexis out to the 30th. The offensive line is beginning to give him some space to work. Well, you can begin to hear the intensity picking up on the field. In fact, let's do that. A little helmet to helmet there. Rich was a little slow getting up. Yeah, I think he felt that one. He's a tough kid. He's back up there, though. I felt it in my headphones. <laughs> I'm not a tough kid, though. Second and five at the 30. He is a tough kid. You're going again. No rest for the weary. Alexis for a little two more. And he's getting close to 100 yards. One guy that's pretty impressive for San Jose State is their defensive tackle, Kenji Green really occupying people in the middle, especially center Todd Backert. Kenji Green's a redshirt freshman, and that's allowing guys like LeHaron to come up and make plays like that. He's a walk-on effect. So many of these guys that Fitz Hill has out there are guys that you know, they're just trying to piece together. San Jose State feeling themselves on the ropes a little bit. We'll take a timeout. We will as well. The Huskies may have regained control. They've got to complete the job on this drive. Trailing 10-7 on Fox Sports Net.
Washington Huskies trailing San Jose State 10-7, but after a lethargic first half of football, seemed to as though they have may have regained control. San Jose State takes a timeout to try to recollect themselves. A big third and three here. Huskies have hit on their last four third downs. Pickett avoiding the rush. Make run, he does, and gets the first down after the 20. And the Huskies have now converted on six of 10 third downs on the day after starting just one of five. See that time, Cody Pickett looking to the left for the big number one out there, Reggie Williams. Reggie not there. Cody wasn't able to get that pass off, but did the smart thing, tried to find some open space, ran out to his right, and the best thing about it, David, is he tucked the ball and went down, didn't try to gain more than he could. He has fumbled once already today and mishandled the snap in the first half, both which led to turnovers. High formation, Tuyasa Sopo is your fullback. Pickett looking for the end zone. Reggie's got room. Six for the Dogs. And they lead. Reggie Williams with his fourth career touchdown, first of the season. And the Huskies have regained the lead on back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives. Cody Pickett, a little breakdown early, but then he turns it up, a little out and up. And right there, you see the nice throw that time. Carlos Custas not able to stay with him. Anderson's extra point is good. And the juggernaut that we expected to see coming rolling out of the locker room in the first half has shown up for the second half. The Huskies lead the Spartans. 14-10 on Fox Sportsnet. Cody Pickett has found his rhythm in the second half. Seven of nine for 83 yards, two touchdowns, and that's put the Huskies up four on San Jose State. David Locke along with Sonny Sixkiller on an, as always, beautiful day at Husky Stadium. And Anderson kicks it off. Starling at the 20, cuts through, out to the 30. Touchdown that play went to Reggie Williams. He said he wants more this year after having just three. Sonny, if he keeps doing moves like this, he'll get some more. Nice little hesitation move right there. Cody Pickett with a little fake himself in the backfield. He's slipping by the DB and nice throw. It's nice to throw to a guy 6'4 out in the corner of the end zone. The DB guarding him is 5'9 on that play. And with giving up 45 pounds as well. Reggie using that to his benefit. Arroyo stays in at quarterback for San Jose State. A little trickery as the pass goes behind the line of scrimmage to Pauly. He'll run. And get just about four before Greg Carruthers in on the tackle, his ninth of the game. Well, it's interesting to see Pauly go all the way across the field in motion and the quarterback hitting him. One thing about Pauly, he has thrown passes as a wide receiver, David. It looks to me like they may have run that to set that up sometime in this second half. Well, this second half is vastly different from the first half. As the Huskies were really outplayed in the first half pretty dramatically. And now, with a 126 to 8 advantage. They are following the script of the 1995 game where the Huskies dominated the second half against San Jose State after being tied 14-14. Second and five, Pauly in motion. Arroyo looking across the middle, goes off the hand, the receiver intercepted by Benjamin. Having Benjamin with his first career interception, and the Huskies are in business again. Evan Benjamin, the red shirt freshman here, local kid. Watch him back here. You see him back here with a hand motion, looking at the quarterback. Deflection, stayed in the right discipline area. He's supposed to be in, David, and made the grab. Ben Madavi got his hand in the sight of the receiver. Yeah, Tuati wouldn't, you know, the ball was thrown behind him, 
And when you're thrown into the crowd like that, that's what that safety's there for. Help out on pass protection, but also get those kind of plays. One thing Fitz Hill did not want his team to do was turn it over, and they've done that now. Huskies with the lead and the football for the first time. Alexis gets one, but a flag on the play. Alexis at 96 yards, looking to go over 100. Guys, on the defense, five yard penalty, still first down. Now make it first and five. Well, two guys in there, Fitz Hill, you know, he's he had a big recruiting class this year, another true freshman in on that play, but also a JC transfer, kind of the both worlds that he has to work in when you have to deal with so many JCs. First and five, and they have Tuiasa Sopo as the fullback, and he lays a nice block in open space for Alexis. He's over 100 yards and out to the 25-yard line. Gerald Jones makes the tackle, Rich Alexis goes over 100 for the first time this season, the first time since his freshman year against Washington State. Aaron Butler out there as well, occupying some people, but again, Dan Dick, 78, the big fella, right there clearing the way, and out there on LaHaren, the linebacker, and Rich Alexis cutting back. Picking up a lot of yards today in that gap there, Dave. He's really gotta be gaining confidence after what was a tough year for a very inexperienced football player last year. Pick it to throw, looking for his third touchdown. That goes short to Williams. Stiff arms, the much smaller Gustus or Cook, and picks up an extra five. Reggie Williams out there one on one with Melvin Cook. That time, you know, Cody Pickett had to throw that ball a long way. As you see him looking to the right side, really wanted to go that way. He came all the way across the field, and Reggie Williams with an eight yard cushion able to get the reception. and. Right there, just kind of push the guy down and get an extra five yards. Not enough can be said about the job by Khalif Barnes, Aaron Butler, and the crew that is allowing Reggie Williams to make plays like this. Yeah, you know, it's nice to have a little time to throw the football. Pickett is getting a lot of time right now, and he's throwing well. This one's incomplete. Cody is 18 of 26 now. C.J. Arnold in on it again. We've called his name a ton today. Yeah, C.J. Arnold's been around the football a lot, and that time with the little quick hitter to Paul Arnold. Not there. It had to have been a great pass. See the pass yards now. Cody Pickett over 200 yards, David. Cody Pickett last year set a school record, averaging 240 yards passing per game. And I talked to Keith Gilbertson this week, and he told me he thought they left a lot of offense in the passing game on the field in Michigan. He threw for 318. What may, they, what may he be able to do this year? With these type of weapons, nobody in the backfield. Pick it with a short drop, going to the end zone for where? Knocked away. Cook in on the coverage, doing a nice job. I tell you what, if he had looked out to the right side, E.T. Charles Frederick didn't have anyone within 20 yards of him. Frederick, after his great game last week, five catches, has just one today. But that's good defense right there. Cook closing out on it, knocking it away. Yeah, when you have the tight end going down to that corner route, it's got to be a perfect pass. If you can't lead him, David, if you can't lead him to the sideline, so to speak, it allows guys like the corner to come off and make plays like that. Huskies have converted on five straight third downs and have a third and ten here. Pickett scrambles, still looking to throw. Running out of room, back across his body, incomplete. Field goal unit will wander on. Big stop for San Jose State. Well, it is, and it, you know the field is so short now when you're that close to the end zone that your routes are much shorter. You can't extend it downfield, and San Jose State did a good job just dropping off in areas where Cody Pickett couldn't find the open man. John Anderson will attempt the field goal. His first field goal attempt of the day. He was one for two in Ann Arbor. Missed the short one, which was the same distance as this 28-yard attempt. This one's dead solid perfect. And the Huskies have scored 17 unanswered points to lead San Jose State 17-10 in the third quarter. 
It's Husky football on Fox Sports Net. Sluggish first half is in the books to be forgotten about as the Huskies have scored 17 unanswered. John Anderson to kick off. It's a low, or excuse me, a short high kick taken at the 18. Trying to change directions is Starling. He'll get to the 25 where special teams stand out. Tyler Frambrink in on the tackle. Time of possession here in the second half is outrageous. 9.48 for the Huskies, 2.13. For San Jose State. This game, in my mind, Hus uh, Husky legend, <laughs> Sonny Sixkiller. That's how I'm supposed to refer to you at all yeah. times, aren't I? Yeah, you started uh, to say honey. I know you did. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know you that well yet. Just, just wait till we go to Eugene together and have to really support each other. Uh, this game changed when I thought when Fitz Hill changed quarterbacks. Scott Rislov had him rolling, and Marcus Arroyo has not been very strong. And he's still at quarterback. Side screen, Starling sniffed out, but a broken tackle. And he'll pick up four. Marquise Cooper, for one of the few times we've seen in two games, could not bring down the ball carrier. Yeah, Kendrick Starling, nice reception. Good, quick pass that time by San Jose State. You can see Marquise Cooper on him in good coverage right there, just not able to get a good hold of his legs. Great hustle by Josh Miller. That's nice to see their defensive interior lineman out there making a tackle out there in the flat. Hit three tackles, one of them a big one against Michigan. Flags fly and they stop the play. May have been Tim Provost, their big right tackle. He's on the outlet watch list. He's not supposed to make mistakes. Huh. Already been invited to the 34 starts in a college career in your second of the year. And they don't, they call it on the, the other way, offsides against the Huskies. Mentioned a second ago, Rizlov, 13 of 19, 149, but more importantly, three scoring drives. They missed two field goals, that's not his fault. He got a touchdown. Or, or four scoring drives, Arroyo, actually Arroyo got the one field goal drive, three of eight for 49 yards, and the interception. Well, unless something happened, he did run that ball a couple times. That one time we saw him on the QB keeper around QB sweep, David. We haven't had word that he's injured, but. Surprising move, second and one. Last sweep, it's Ferguson, five foot five. He sits around, changes direction, and I don't Another know. flag on the play. Blew the flag right at Jeff Gordon, their left tackle. Usually that means a hold. You are correct, sir. Well, it's tough when you're an offensive lineman. You feel something hit your leg. You look down, it's a yellow flag. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can pick it up from the right side right there on the far left side of the screen was number 78 that's Gordon that's a 10 yard penalty so that changes that's a big move right there from second and one out to only second and seven because the penalty was past the line of scrimmage shotgun formation again Blitz coming, Arroyo with time over the middle, Pauly, complete. Great concentration as Cooper was right there hitting him as he caught it. Yeah, Pauly out there with great Carruthers on him. That was a nice throw by Arroyo, getting it out there before Marquise Cooper could get back there in coverage. Nice throw. Oh, that's a better catch the second time we see it. 
I tell you, San Jose State uses kind of a funky ball too, David. It's a little bit smaller than a UW ball. It's, it's, I went down and I, I threw it around a little bit and it's got a nice tight spiral. You can really hum that thing. Well, he was seven catches, 119 yards. Ferguson, maybe the reason they use the smaller ball is so Ferguson can hold it at 5'5". Five five. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you got a little leeway in the NC2A, and uh, they definitely took it to the other end. Ferguson, 13 carry for 52 yards. Well, they've kind of regrouped here, though, David. they got a nice little thing going here for San Jose State. Huskies need to really get some pressure on them. The quick passes, they've had good protection. Haven't had really a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks today outside of one opportunity from the defense. Seems, though, they may have simplified the single back package, the, the single wing package that they're running. Similar to what Bruce Snyder runs at Kansas, not Bruce Snyder, what uh, Snyder runs at Kansas State. The Huskies saw in that Holiday Bowl. Bill Snyder. Bill Snyder, thank you. Royals looking deep into coverage. Carruthers right there to knock it out of Starling's hands. Had a lot of time to throw the football. But that time, great Carruthers in great position to defend the pass. Looked like Arroyo was already made up his mind. He was going to go downfield back in the middle of the field. Jamal Broussard was, uh, had a lot, of, a lot of open territory. I thought for a second our cameraman was going to make the catch. Oh, he can. That was a great shot right there. Nice work. Carruthers, obviously very active. San Jose State, 5 of 13. On third down, this is third and seven. Ferguson goes in motion left. Boy, over the middle, in traffic. Madavi knocks it away. Boy, a lot of confusion by the Husky defense prior to snap. Arroyo, I think, threw to the wrong man. The tight end was wide open on the near sideline. Look at Madavi in the middle right there, signaling all over the place. Guys are moving around, trying to get in the right position. Right there, in position to knock the ball away oh with Marquise Cooper. Look at the guy back behind him. Starling had gotten behind the whole defense. Good eye, Sonny. Car to punt. Oh, good kick. Bounces softly at the 10. Comes back Husky direction to the 11. As the third quarter comes to a close. The Huskies will start deep in their own zone, but they dominated the third quarter of football, scoring 17 unanswered points and regaining control. 17-10 here at Husky Stadium on Fox Sportsnet. Celebrating Husky greats of years gone by. As the Husky Hall of Fame opened this week. What a wonderful building. Husky legend today is former coach Jim Owens. Guy you know well, Sonny. Big J.O. You look out, see him in that end zone. But he looked the other way. You could see where he used to walk across the water to his house. The big man could walk on water. Did you know that, David? Uh, that's at least what he told you, right? <laughs> Hall of Fame is a wonderful building. People have worked very, very hard. David Terrell, amongst others, deserves an incredible amount of credit. It, it's neat to see the, the history all in one building and more than that so beautifully laid out. Yeah, it is a beautiful site, and Barbara Hedges and all her staff did a great job putting that thing together, and all the people like David, as you mentioned. That'll be th open, by the way, three hours before kickoff. And the Huskies are home. Pass to Williams, he's got some room. He's at the 50. He may just leg it all the way out. Reggie's going to the house. Six for the dogs. 89 yards. And Reggie's been in the end zone twice. Well, 
what do you say David you, you get the ball in the in your athletes hands and right here Cody Pickett selling in Reggie Williams right there in the short zone about eight yards downfield cuts to the far side of the near side of the field and no one's going to catch him he's just chugging down the sideline the longest touchdown in Husky history put it in the Husky Hall of Fame Break the record by Willie Roseboro in 1980 against Air Force with 84 yards. Reggie Williams, an 89-yard touchdown, the longest in Husky history. Trust me, he did that 89 quicker than Willie did in 80. <laughs> <laughs> and Cody Pickett adds to his legacy of the long passes as Cody came into this game as the only quarterback in Husky history to throw three passes over 70 yards, added to number four on the list. Boy. And Cody Pickett is now the first quarterback in Husky history, breaking Sonny Sixkiller's record to have four 300-yard games in his career. Wow, that's amazing. And, you know, this young man has another, what, 11 games, 10 games plus a whole year to go. He may shatter them all, <laughs> I'll tell you what, if he's got Reggie, guys like Reggie Williams running them right here, number one, Paul Arnold even is, wants to get in on the picture in the papers as well. How fast is Reggie Williams? He just outran Paul Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, who knows what's gonna happen the rest of the year. The record book on Cody Pickett and Reggie Williams combo is gonna be quite something special. Well, I tell you, a lot of teams do it. You don't need to throw the ball 30, 40 yards downfield. Throw it under 10, you can still have a big play. Kick off to Starling. Up oh, there's a block from behind. And a bunch of flags. Starling's got some room out to the 30. We'll see what the man in the white hat has to say about that. The Huskies lead it 24-10. As right as we show you the Husky Hall of Fame, a few things to go into it take place. <laughs> it's amazing, David, and it, uh, you know, in the first half, we never thought you would be saying that. <laughs> they have run off 24 straight. Took a little while to get going. I guess maybe there was a hangover from Michigan. <laughs> it lasted about 30 minutes. Well, that happens. You know, we're talking about young men that takes a while to get rid of it, but uh, you always say, you talk about waiting, it's over with, it's in the past, but it's until you get out in the field again. On the return, during the return, penalty will be forced half the distance to the goal, first down. Now you gotta start from your own seven yard line. A Little bit of pressure on the San Jose State offense now to try and get some room, get some yards downfield. Now there's a big, huge momentum thing coming down from Snoqualmie and the San Jose State Spartans are going to have a hard time slowing this thing down right well, now. Well, I tell you, you know, it's uh, Rislov must have been hurt, as we mentioned, because Arroyo is still in the ball game at quarterback. Four of 11 with an interception. High formation play action. Blocked in the line. It's up for grabs and caught. And then stuck. <laughs> but congratulations to Joe Hayes for what I've got to assume is his first college reception. Well, Joe Hayes, you know, should have just batted it down, but I think he was getting a little anxious to try and get something happening for that offense. Thought he could ramble down the field. He just saw Reggie Williams go the distance. But you know what? Joe Hayes wasn't going to go anywhere. Joe Hayes lost 30 pounds in the offseason. Get down to 304. He thought he was a running back. Yeah. Jafar Williams had other things to think about that. <laughs> Huskies lead it 24 to 10. They've run out 24 straight. And what has been a relatively quiet Husky Stadium is rolling now. Here comes the rush. Balls up in the air, intercepted. Terry Johnson. Let's see if they call it a safety or a touchdown. 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 Terry Johnson with his second career. Touchdown, the first in the Holiday Bowl last year. flag on the play which is intentional grounding which I would assume the Huskies will decline and they will touchdown Terry Johnson you know it's not often you see and see 
right here, Josh Miller back there, great, great pressure, intentional grounding on a completion or an interception. I mean, <laughs> I've just never seen that before. Intentional grounding normally is an incomplete pass out in the flat. How about a defensive lineman that ends up with two touchdowns in his career? Wow. In the span of three games for that matter. He was an All-State volleyball player, was Terry Johnson in high school. He used some of those skills right there to pull that one down. All of a sudden, the Huskies have run away, up 31 to 10. The man they call Tank. Put a few points on the board. Husky football on Fox Sports Net. Don't blink, the Huskies might score again. They've rolled off 31 points in a span of 16 minutes of football. John Anderson, leg weary, kicks it off deep. And the defense comes down, takes it to 14. There is a flag on the play. As the yellow hanky is becoming rather prevalent right now. Penalty is holding against San Jose State. Which wow. means that they will start at their Seven, seven yard line and Again. i gotta tell you what i believe there's a phrase for this it's called closing the barn door after the horses are already out <laughs> and that is scott rislov has returned as quarterback for the san jose state spartans and they have four wide out of a gun Darling of the catch, good by Johnson. And then game tackled as six purple jerseys need him to push him out of bounds. Well, it was a nice move by Starling to free up some room and get some yardage. Yeah, Rislop is still a mystery to us why he hadn't been playing before, why he was taken out, but that ball was nice and crisp, getting it outside quickly to his wide receiver. Rislop was 13 of 19 in his first Appearance now 14 of 20. His first drive was a 10 play Look drive for 58 yardage. yards. And his next drive was an 8 for 38. Those yardage numbers. All when Rizlam was in for San Jose State, and the Huskies have absolutely dominated the second half. Rizlam again. Polly, the leading receiver today for San Jose State, who has now eight catches. Ty Ellis. Seemingly is everywhere, makes the play. Are there three of him, by the way? <laughs> nice intensity there in that look. I like that. Kai Ellis uh, didn't know whether he was going to play this year, thought early on about maybe even having a red shirt this season, but he's been very productive in a game in three quarters so far this season. And against Michigan, two tackles for a loss, a sack, an interception, and a fumble. Third and two. Ferguson. With not much room at all and absolutely stonewalled. The Huskies have come to play in the second half. Yeah, toss sweep like that. Ferguson hanging out to the right. The Huskies in great pursuit and great position to make a play. Rizloff is staying on the field at this point, thinking that maybe they'll go for it on fourth down. But with almost 13 minutes to play, they need to put it away. Charles Frederick is back. Frederick, who only got 5.3 yards of return against Michigan. Well, Michael Carr doesn't really boot him deep. This one is low. It will bounce at the 47 and go out of bounds right around the 50. That's where the Huskies will take over. It's Cody Pickett. And the crew have combined for three straight touchdown drives. And 
now the numbers are getting gaudy. Well, you, you'd wonder that even at this point, uh, maybe Cody on one more drive and coaches might want to take a look at bringing Taylor Barton in for a few snaps in this fourth quarter, David. Maybe a little Chris Singleton running back since Lexus has carried the ball 20 times for 107 yards. But you got, they got a rhythm going right now and they were, had so few plays in the first half. You'd probably like them to keep it. Here's Alexis. Oh, nice tackle. Got down, that's LaHaren. He's the stud of the San Jose State defense. Oh, he's shown us why. Been everywhere, hadn't he, David? He's really shooting up there pretty pretty nice and quick for a guy coming off a leg injury from a year ago. 95 tackles in the year previous. Just to put that in perspective, Husky fans know how Ben Madavi is everywhere. He had 85 last season. That type of player. Second and 11. Looking again for Reggie. And it's complete. Reggie Williams now with six catches for 158 yards. I'll tell you, if Cody Pickett had laid that down the field, down this direction, up in here, that would have been a touchdown. He threw it a little bit behind Reggie. Reggie had to hang up for it and make the grab. But I'll tell you, he just missed an opportunity for another touchdown pass. Sonny's getting greedy. Well, I just, uh, I, you know, you see receivers like that, you want to get down and throw one to them. Reggie had just one catch for 14 yards in the first half. He has five for 144 in the second. And Alexis powers through. There's another guy whose first half for second half is pretty dramatic. Alexis had 10 carries for 62 yards in the first half. He now has 12 carries for about 60 yards in the second half. Well, look at ET out there. Charles Frederick also in position to make a block for Rich Alexis coming right at us. And fans can really see those holes opening up with that shot. That's a great shot for football fans. So cameraman having a pretty good day here in the second half as well. Alexis 22 for 115. His career high is 134 against Washington State in the Apple Cup his freshman year. First down Huskies. Well, I know Rich after last week having two touchdown runs. Would like to get another one today to keep the streak alive. Sonny, I think one of the key things on Rich Alexis is, if you remember that Michigan game, there's a point where he had a great camera angle. He went back to the huddle and was visibly frustrated and really looked as though, you know, he could lose his focus, but showed the maturity of a junior who's been through a tough year last year and then turned it into the big run that put Washington what seemed to be in control at the time. Here's Tui Yasusopo. He fumbled the football. And may have gotten it back himself. There's a flag on the play as well. Yeah. Tuyasa Sopo trying to break it to the outside to pick up some yardage. And carrying it like a loaf of gay's bread out there. <laughs> got it ripped away. Yeah. He saw green grass and got pretty excited. <laughs> he realized there was a guy hanging on him from behind. Zach had a carry against Michigan, so it's not his first carry as a Husky. He also had that nice catch, a nine-yard reception. What'd you call it, a grazed loaf? Of <laughs> no. <laughs> Good job. You know, the only thing he did wrong there is having the ball when you're going around the corner and guys are slapping at it. He had it in his left hand instead of his right hand. A little tough to switch hands down there, but if that's the case, hang on with both. Penalty on the Huskies will push it back for a loss of nine on the penalty. Make it first and 19. Well, let's see. The Huskies haven't been in this position. And for the first time today, the Huskies are a little late getting the game, getting the ball in our game to play in. Only timeout. And everybody lined up wrong, so they'll take a timeout. Well, that hasn't happened all day something fans usually like to really harp on but Keith Gilbertson and the crew have been doing an outstanding job of that throughout the day until right then leading 31 to 10 having scored on three straight drives the Huskies are in control on Fox Sports Net
Beautiful afternoon in Seattle, Washington, which has been nice to the Husky fans in the second half as the Huskies have completely dominated. Pickett just misses Frederick. The Huskies lead at 31-10 after trailing 10-0 at the half, having scored on three straight drives. Well, he had a couple options that time. He had Charles Frederick outside wide and Paul Arnold wide open in the middle inside the hash marks. Cody Pickett elects to go out wide. You saw Paul Arnold come in open. Not a very good throw on that pass. Sonny, Cody's not seemingly on his game. Now, we were pretty spoiled last year. So the guy's not on his game entirely. He's 20 for 31 for 315 yards. The same question gets asked. When these guys hit their rhythm, what are they going to do? Pick it, rolling, throwing, complete. It's Eddie Jackson at the 11. Maybe it's plays like that to make us think he should hit everything. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's so. unbelievable. The col calm, yeah. collected, and then the throw against your body. Well, he had a lot of time. No one over to his left. I mean, once that one rush man goes by you, there's nobody really going to put pressure on him. And Good job on his feet to square his shoulders up to deliver that ball. That is a tough throw. Watch his feet on this one, David. This is what you need to do right there. Boom. Kind of straighten his shoulders out so he can get his arm through. Toughest throw in the game, isn't it? Against your body? What? Yeah, I, I think it's definitely one of the toughest. Take it to throw again toward the end zone. Touchdown! To the no! Incomplete! Incomplete! Kevin Ware seemed to have both feet in. They rule him out. They only need one of the two. It looked like he had both in. Yeah, we got to see that one again. That was great concentration by Kevin Ware. And also an excellent throw by Cody Pickett. Look down low. Has the ball in his hands right now. That's a touchdown. That's a boys touchdown. And girls. Both feet were in. I told you both feet were in. Did you doubt it? No, I don't doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a touchdown. They're playing it on the jumbotron, and you can hear the reaction. Wow. That's a touchdown by a lot. Boy, no kidding. You think the official took, snuck a peek there and realized how badly he just missed it? I don't think so, but I think he sent his contribution in the San Jose State recently. Reverse to Arnold. Barnes out in front. And the San Jose State Spartans play very strong fundamental defense. Led by Chip Kimmich. Yeah, they had that one sniffed out all the way as the defense really reacted well, but the fans were still pulling over the the call on the touchdown or appeared to be touchdown by Kevin Ware. Third down here, see if the Huskies can get it in the end zone. See Rick Neuheisel looking back, see where that back judge is. Make sure he's in position to make a call. The tough thing is on this field turf, it leaves marks too where the feet are. It's kind of like playing play tennis, Roland Garros or something. They can always go and mark it where it was. Third down, Pickett sidesteps and scrambling again where he's been very effective. Lobs into traffic and intercepted. Uh, Cody knows better than to do that in the traffic. You've got four defenders around the receiver. Rick Neuheisel is going to make sure he knows better than that. Well, you look at it here. Kevin Ware settles in the middle. Looks like Will Hooks trying to get open downfield, and Kevin Ware came back. But it's tough to get it in when you have three defenders surrounding your tight end. Gerald Jones with the interception. He had a pair of interceptions in the spring game. That's how Gerald Jones got that starting safety job. Huskies lead it 31 to 10, which makes that 14 or that seven point touchdown being negated a little less painful. Rizlov at quarterback. Hits Wooten. First down out nice to the scrap. 40. Wooten is the junior out of San Jose, California, who walked on to this team. It's remarkable as you run down the roster of Fitz Hill's San Jose State team. How many kids are walk ons, junior college kids, or more often not change their position? Quarterback, a junior college player, bad snap.
Kozlov tries to dive on it, but it's picked up by the Huskies. Josh Miller, no, Manas Hopoy. Manas Hopoy has got himself his first fumble recovery of his career. Dyslexia never killed anybody, Sonny. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Sorry to step on your toes on this one, David. So right. I got too excited. If it was 65 <laughs> instead of 56, it would have been fine. <laughs> and Rizlov just, the ball's rolling loose. Rizlov tries to do the right thing. And it's not round. It's whatever Rick Neuheisel <laughs> refers to it as, which is some big complicated word. But Great the job. Ball takes some funny bounces sometimes, and Manas Hopoy took advantage. He's yeah. played very well in two games, and the Huskies have a chance to get back for that call. Alexis picks up Fort, piling. That's the most underrated play in football right there, Sonny. At least in this one person's opinion, the running back that is willing to recognize a play and pick up three or four yards. Well, you got to pound it, especially now when you have the lead and you're near the or inside the red zone now. Pick it up, get three yards, and see Rick Neuheisel. Uh, I'm not sure if he wants the clock to keep running or see if Rich Alexis get in the end zone. Alexis at 116 yards on the game. Reggie Williams with two touchdowns is on the near side. It's a flip to Alexis. Williams is the lead blocker. And there's a flag on the play as Alexis goes out at the six. Going to call a hold on Reggie Williams out on the perimeter. Tying up his guy. Pretty neat play call when you got a six foot four, 220 pound wide receiver out as your blocker. And he's the hold that Sonny tipped you off to. You're taught to go down and block. There's no question about that. He's on the freshman out there. His hands, his elbows are inside. I mean, it's like the lineman can get away with it. I don't see what's really wrong with that. I was just going to ask you where the hold was. Had him on the inside on the jersey up by the shoulder pads. Elbows are in. Everything looked cool. But you know, Mr. Official then thinks when you spend some time with Reggie, Actually, now that he has the record for longest TD reception in the history of Washington, he may not be the same way, but he usually likes to talk <laughs> about his blocking. I think he might want to talk about his 89-yard touchdown that ran out, ran by everybody, but no, Reggie really likes to talk about blocking and pancaking guys and getting out there. He benches 330 for a reason. It's one so he can push off on these much smaller cornerbacks, like the one he's going up against right now is only 185, and also so he can block. Cody sidesteps the rush and is now taken down. Well, he's been pressured several times this afternoon, David. That time San Jose State's able to get to him. No one opened downfield, so you had those coverage sacks. They like to call him, and no one was open. So Perry with the sack. Perry had Pretty much is coming right up the middle. Khalif Barnes getting beat to the inside that time, and with no one open downfield, Cody Pickett just... Uh, was there for the grab. Well, a few times the offensive line has been beat badly today. They've been very solid as they were against Michigan. Pickett with 339 yards passing. He owns the school record at 455 against Arizona. Blitz from the outside. Alexis no, picks no, no, it up no, no, well. No. And that leads to a nice time for Cody to find Charles Frederick for the completion. Short of the first down, though. A little short second completion to Charles Frederick today thrown to him only three times. DT had five catches in the opener. 88 yards, including that dynamic touchdown. Well, here, this could be a great confidence booster right here, David. John Anderson in, you're up 31-10, but he's kicking from a hash mark he doesn't normally like. Great point, he hates the right hash. 31-yard attempt. He was only seven of 12 last year in this range, and one of one already this year. And the kick is good. A confidence booster indeed. The Huskies lead San Jose State 34 to 10 on 34 unanswered second half points. They got it rolling finally. Husky football on Fox Sports Network.
They're dancing in the streets. Okay, they're dancing on the track. I'm very happy about it, because if you look up the, the score by quarters, it tells the story. A 10-0 first half for San Jose State, and then a whitewash in the second half as the Huskies are up 34 to 10, 17 in the third, 17 in the fourth. And the Huskies are rolling. And the ball is two, Ooh. right off the tee. Charlie Brown move. The last thing John Anderson needs is to know that he's become Charlie Brown <laughs> in Sonny Siskiller's <laughs> mind. <laughs> Who's Lucy? <laughs> Lucy's wearing, no. Anyway. Cody Pickett, by the way, has just surpassed a 1970 performance by a Mr. Sonny Sixkiller against the University of whom? For 341 yards, Mr. Sixkiller. Who was it? 1970, who do you think? What month was it? Don't know. Your second highest pass, third highest pass total of your career. USC. All right, I'll buy it. You like it when you play well against the Trojans. This kick, no Charlie Brown involved at all. By the way, to finish that thought, he is, uh, 347 yards now puts the eighth best passing performance in Husky history. Illegal procedure on the dogs. So we get to kick again. See if John Anderson can put it in the back of the end zone. Huskies will have a bye week and then they will play Wyoming next. Next time you come out to a Husky football game, make sure you stop by the Dempsey Center before the game starts. The Husky huddle. Well, it has been a great hit this year in the new Dempsey Center. They have interactive games for the friends, and for your friends and family and kids, food, drink, and all the rest. It's free to get in, so make sure you stop on by. And uh, the old Dempsey Center, what a building. It's a huge, beautiful building, and uh, thanks to the Dempseys uh, for making that thing possible. This is a great sighting here, you gotta David. you got to love a guy. Neil Dempsey, was in, I was in an elevator when we were in Michigan, and I... Uh, the elevator. It's pretty obvious we're both there for the Husky. So I was like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm David Locke. And he says, hi, I'm Neil Dempsey. Just could not have been, you know, just nice and calm. Didn't expect me to know him from him. I'm like, oh, really? Hi. Thanks for the building, by the way. <laughs> Anderson will kick it. This one's going to be returnable at Starling. Quite a good athlete. He's got some room. After the 40, one man to beat. It's Anderson. But he cuts back into Wilbur Hooks. Across his half line out to the 48. Wilbur Hooks, nice job staying with it. Injured man down, maybe John Anderson. And that is not the type of injury you want to see. Place kickers, particularly those on scholarship, usually don't have a lot of backups. Hopefully John is all right. And then when he is all right, Every defensive player will give him the ribbing that he's a kicker, because that's what they do to kickers. But only if everything's all right. And John seems to be pretty shaken up right now. Well, it's uh, well, that happens when your bell gets rung a little bit, and perhaps that happened to John. Hopefully it's nothing below his knees or below his hips. And they always say if it's just a bell rung, it shouldn't affect the kicker any. But good job, Starling, right here. Good player, as you mentioned. Let's see what happens to... John Anderson out to try and make a tackle. Just kind of looked like he may have got kicked in the back of the head a little bit by the by Starling's foot. He seems to be moving all right. Well, you know, it's I won't say anything. Kicker jokes are always allowed in football, aren't they? Ferguson hit at the line. Huskies have not made many substitutions on the defensive end yet. Yeah, there's a lot of players that uh, they may be making one on the offensive end, Sonny. Well, you know, it's I, I think it's rightfully so. Taylor Barton's been working hard since he's been here and deserves to have a few snaps. A huge part of Rick Neuheisel's press conference on Monday was talking about sh being in shape and maybe they aren't going to make as many substitutions because these guys need to get, get to work. Well, I was going to say that. There's a lot of guys that haven't had a lot of experience, a lot of games under their belt, and that's the only way you're going to get it is being in the game. Carruthers wraps up Rizlov for the sack. Greg Carruthers with his third career sack. And a big day for the junior from Helena, Montana. Just coming through, you'll see it right here. J 
Junior Coffin occupying the blocker and Greg Carruthers coming inside. Haven't had a lot of that pressure this afternoon, David. We talked about maybe adjustments at halftime, trying to get more pressure on the quarterback. Rislav that time got hurried one time in the first half, but only sacked here. 12th tackle for Carruthers. Five of 15 are the Spartans on third down. Rislav pressured. He's gonna run with it. He's gotta get all the way down to the 39 for a first down. And will not get it, but a flag has been thrown. Well, that's kind of an afterthought throw right there on the sideline. Late hit on the Huskies. Let's see this again. It's obvious he's going out of bounds. There's no need to make it close. No. That's dumb. Yeah, especially since he'd have been about nine yards short of the first down on fourth and nine. But uh, you don't like to see that happen. You, don't, you wouldn't want your own quarterback to have that happen to. But unfortunate. But Rislov looked like he's okay. That'll set it at first down and 10 on the 36 yard line. Back in Husky territory as we wind under five minutes. Eugenie Jackson in the ball game. A few new faces out there and now we begin to see some of those. Sam Cunningham out as well on the corner. Rizlov, play action. Jackson from behind. And Madavi in on it as well. San Jose State with one man going deep and one coming under as usual with this offense. No one open. When your deep guy's covered, that's who you want to throw to off your play action pass, David. Makes it very difficult if you don't have a backup. You don't have somebody to dump it off to like a tight end or a running back. Right there, he knows he's sunk. Got to try and find something like Cody Pickett did for a touchdown, but Greeny Jackson, great, great job. Great work working off the blocker, keeping his head up and knowing what's going on. Absolutely, and he just got into the ball game. Run defense today, pretty strong. 32 carries for the San Jose State, just 41 yards. And then collegiate stat, the sack goes against it. Pass behind Pauly, incomplete. Boy, Pauly was wide open on that play. Like Chris Massey may have came off of coverage a little bit too quickly, releasing down to the safeties, but uh, that pass should have been completed. Paulie hasn't missed a lot today. Eight catches for 122 yards. Trust me, it wasn't he that missed it. It was number five. <laughs> he hasn't missed it many either. He's 16 to 23. Yeah. <laughs> third and 10. Five for 16 now for San Jose State on third down. 0 for four in the second half. Blitz, or excuse me, rush comes around. Just a Manasseh, full rush. Manasse Hopoy again. Just pure power. Well, I tell you, Manasse that time just overpowering his blocker, using that leg strength and drive just to keep pushing. See it coming right there. Watch his legs. See those oh. legs just keep moving down there. Boy, he just. All the way to the quarterback. Took Oscar Rigg, the running back. <laughs> Sent him back on his heels like a weeble wobble. Yeah. But weeble wobbles don't fall down. Oscar Rigg didn't see too many rushes like that down there at uh, Shasta Community College, <laughs> trust me. Another one of the JC guys. That'll bring in Carr to punt. Frederick back. He's going to let it fall at the five. And take him down at the one. 251 left. The Huskies are up 34 to 10. Taylor Barton may get his first action when we come back. He's gonna do it with his back up against the wall on Fox Sports Net.
second half completely dominated by the Huskies. They out, have outscored the Spartans 34 to nothing, lead at 34-10. Barton will just fall forward in his first snap of the year. We've got the twos in there now, David, and uh, Brad Bannerman in there at center with uh, Taylor Barton. Barton, who last year started the USC, or started the UCLA game, threw for 316 yards, came off the bench in the USC game, threw for 197. And the win. Great relief effort against the Trojans. Had two touchdowns in that game. In fact, last year he threw for five touchdowns and just two interceptions. Chris Singleton and Ty Ericks in the backfield as well. This is Singleton with some room. All the way out to the 14 yard line and a first down. Good job up front from the offensive line. Boy, getting off the ball quickly and opening a little hole there. See Simonson 70, Jason Simonson who's filling in for Tusi Sal who ran into a car <laughs> on a skateboard, <laughs> not able to be out there today and good job by the young, young man. Rick Neuheisel just shook his head when he told the media about that injury. What am I to do, he said. Ty Ericks, who's at fullback right now, has gone from fullback to linebacker, back to fullback this year. They're excited about what he brings to the table. And Singleton will get the carry. Singleton. Out there riding the hip of Simonson. Chris Singleton maybe a little bit too close to a guard coming around the corner, but uh, nice adjustments at halftime today, huh, David, to get these guys, to get the twos in. If you're thinking just the first half, you'd never see them, but uh, the Huskies came out and responded. Wasn't the way the coaching staff would write it, but they got exactly what they wanted out of this. A lot of time, good reps, good understanding, and they faced a tougher team than I think people realize. That the way San Jose State plays this game is a very difficult thing to prepare for and be ready to go. And the Huskies were on their heels for a large time until they got it rolling. And then they looked exactly as I think everybody would want them to be. Singleton will take the final, maybe the final carry of the game. Oh, nice drive. Good work by this Simonson leading the way again. He lost his helmet on it. And Chris Singleton taking advantage of it. First down, that'll stop the clock. We'll have another snap. A bye week for the Huskies, which is, people have said they don't like the bye week before a Wyoming, but, and the clock will now tick off, and we're finished. But a bye week coming up right now is great for the Huskies because they're able to really use two games of understanding and focus on it. A 34-10 win for the Washington Huskies against the San Jose State Spartans on Fox Sports Net. The 14th ranked Washington Huskies leave the field victorious with a blowout win over the San Jose State Martins, 34 to 10. Took a little while to get going and Sonny, when we talked about this ball game at halftime, the one thing we said is as much as you might want to get the running game going, when you decide to go away from the passing game, you're probably taking your six best players out of the ball game. They went back to the passing game and it worked very well. Oh, and there's no question. I mean, you have Reggie Williams and Paul Arnold and Charles Frederick, all those young men. And that young man right there, Cody Pickett, really came out on the second half and got hot. And he helped himself with plays like that, avoiding sack, avoiding pressure, and having the sense to look downfield and find guys like Wilbur Hooks. And right here, one guy we were looking for all day to get on track, Reggie Williams. Short pass, doesn't have to be long, but he turned on the speed, got around the corner, and like I said, 89 yards, school record. What a play. And the record-breaking career of Cody Pickett continues. He has the number one QB performance of all time against Arizona, 455 yards, but he sneaks himself into number nine, bumping a Sonny <laughs> six killer off the list. But don't worry, Sonny, you're still on there twice. 347 yards passing today for Cody. That led the way is really in the second half. That's what the Huskies did differently. They got it rolling. They made the big plays. They got turnovers. And this is a good game to build on. On behalf of our director, Carl Malone, our producer, John Bradford, the crew here, 
in the booth, our stats man, Brian Vicky, and our spotter today. The final score from Husky Stadium is the Washington Huskies 34, San Jose State 10. You've been watching Washington Husky football on Fox Sportsnet.